due to a little bit of technical difficulty, um, trying to record then re-record over a recording with an introduction that, yeah. So anyway, um, we decided to redo it. Uh, not the entire episode, but so much as remaster it. It is now remastered. Congratulations. So if you've downloaded it before, I apologize. If you haven't downloaded uh, the really uh, horrid rendition that we had earlier, hey, it's always been perfect and pay no mind. Anyway, on this episode of Mob Rules, we are going to talk about Ultramarines the movie. So it's a little bit high sodium, so watch out. We're going to get into some Age of Sigmar. And not not a whole lot, more just the response Anyway, you'll hear. And that's about it on episode 27 of Mob Rules. That's the part where we harmonize. On my levels. Okay. I talk into a radio all day long. So. You've been doing radio all day long? Yes. Yeah? Practicing in your car? Yes. With your thumb? Hi. You get your radio I voice. You. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ted. Uh, welcome yeah. to Mall Rules episode yeah. 27. Uh, you, of course, hear the dulcet tones of Ted talking about thumbing things. Yeah. Uh, I am, of I like, course, John. I like to pretend the audience is my thumb. Um, I, I don't enjoy I putting my, my thumb in things as much really? as Ted does. No. In pies. Um, <laughs> and then we all are joined this time <laughs> by Andy. Uh, what What is your opinion of thumbs and pies? <laughs> it varies. Yeah. Yeah. The Come size of the thumb, the cleanliness of the thumb, the type of pie. <laughs> the cleanliness of the so pie. So do you, do you have an ideal uh, pie for thumbing? Probably not off the top of my head, but okay. I will say that in all circumstances, pie? pie is superior to cake. Pie is oh. superior to cake. Oh, yeah. Mob yeah? Rules, of okay. course, your premier 40 Warhammer 40,000 podcast. It's it's a bit more moist than the cake. I'd, I'd appreciate in most it. cases, I would believe so. Uh, yeah. I, I like a little bit more moisture on my thumb when I'm caking. <laughs> pieing. I don't know. So, <laughs> Ted, in the world of Warhammer 40,000... <laughs> Uh, what have you been up to since we last wow, spoke? Wow, jumping right into this. I know, I'm jumping right into it. Because right. I, I feel we have such good material coming up for our main topic oh, today. Okay. When we're going to be talking about our Space Marine movie. We, um, we made a movie! Yeah, oh yeah, we made the movie. We made a movie! Fuck, if we made that movie, then yeah, there would be at least one Rhino involved. It, it was but so I, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. Ted, there was a while ago, like I saw that like there was a company that was making like custom made action figure, like twelve inch action figures, and they were doing space marines and stuff. Have you seen that before? Are you talking about sideshow collectibles? Is that who does it? Like, like the statues, not the actual. They're actual action figures, so it's like fully. Pulled. I think they have like a um, like a wireframe or something like that that they use. I, like I might have seen some of that and... stuff, but I thought it was just like somebody made like a custom it, chaplain, custom and stuff. They, yeah, they not an actual it. company, maybe, but yeah, I can't remember. I think I, I posted on AKW at one point, but. I mean... See, if we had a bunch of those, we could make this movie. All we need is like ten. That's they all. Might, they, walking, they might look a little more realistic too. Yes. <laughs> Robot chicken style. Seriously, like on your patio. A little bit. <laughs> Fighting chaos among cinder blocks. <laughs> well, we we can always record out of order if you want. No, we can just no, get no, that out of the way just I, now. Yeah, okay. So the things I've been into, forty k. <laughs> Let's <related. laughs> look through this shit real quick. So, um, I don't know. Maybe we should do a whole section on uh, the tale of gamers or gamer's tale. Gamer's tale. Yeah. yeah that, but, that sounds good. So, we've been d- doing a little bit of that, but um, otherwise, I haven't really been doing too much 40K other than gamer's tale and, and this, but uh, I got commissioned to do a bunch of war uh, war machine and horde stuff, so I was kind of oh. looking for that. I got a, a new uh, airbrush. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean... Yeah. No. Yay for getting money for doing commission work and yeah. all that other, but you well, know, I haven't got paid for it, hoards. so it's, it's oh still, man, that might be LVO. That'll that money will turn into LVO. Oh, LVO money, just like yeah. ching, you're an LVO. Or failing that, you're gonna have a, an awesome uh, war machine army, <laughs> right? On eBay, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pro painted. <laughs> uh, so I think that's about it. Like I've been doing a lot of non 40k related stuff. Like uh, I got commissioned to do a 48 foot wall mural uh, downtown. I've been seeing your post on that. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Like, there's like homeless people will come up and like, yo, man, thanks a lot for doing this. Like, oh, that's great. Even the homeless love it. Yeah, it's bright in their When day. I'm on my acid trip, seeing all those colors on the wall makes it normal. They 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 can't afford acid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Trust 
trust me, it is uh, sometimes just Listerine. It's that's a meager yes. existence. Yeah. When you can't um, afford acid. I will <laughs> say it would be from Andy's profession that he knows that they can't afford acid and is not as a drug dealer to the homeless. Yes. So, or he's just like, oh yeah, by the way, you guys can't afford that. Yeah, so yeah. Andy works at Walgreens. Yeah, yes, he works yeah. at Walgreens. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i think like one of the great things like some of the people i think coming by and like asking questions were really great i was telling john about this but uh there was a uh i think the second day by this point like it had been so hot it's so sunny here in anchorage um for the last few days but i think that it kind of affected my brain a little bit and so everything became really funny and uh it's I, been it's 82 in the valley hard really yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and that might not sound like really impressive for people down in Arizona, but for us, it's really a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculously bad. <laughs> I had this like older, like this fifty year old, like blue collar worker guy with his wife show up, and he was like, uh, "So what's your process?" <laughs> the first thing out of my mouth, like for whatever reason, like hard drugs. <laughs> like, <laughs> Inspiration. That guy just like lost it. I was like, "Oh shit! I probably shouldn't be doing this." I'm technically representing the uh, the mayor's office. <laughs> it's like that's who lined up this project. It, new uh, mayor. Yeah, <laughs> it's new a mayor. New, mistakes. New, a little policies. bit more friendly to maybe like the homeless population <laughs> out here. <laughs> Friendlier to the heroin addict artists. <laughs> He's left leaning, so it's all right. <laughs> you might be allowed to sit in public areas. Oh, that's yeah. some insider baseball that's for the big time. <laughs> Mob rules. You're number one source for Anchorage municipality <laughs> bylaws and mayoral debates. So after this guy, like, you know, he thankfully he laughed off like what I had said. And I was like, no, 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 really, I'm just kidding. Uh, the, uh, but yeah, the, uh, my, my process is, uh, you know, I'll start with a vision. Like, I probably shouldn't have said that right after I said hard drugs, right? <laughs> like, this like, sounds oh. all like fishing conversation right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. So you, you know what I'm putting down, right? Yeah. You're picking it up, you know? <laughs> so maybe that was it. Maybe he was looking at code. Like, for him, yeah. it was a completely different thing. He's like, okay, Russian River, the Reds are running. Yes, I'm Russian there. River, yeah, or truck stop bathroom, foot tapping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was a great, great album. I'm getting ass. Yeah. <laughs> Over the transit center. Love it's a that. really underrated uh, country album is the truck stop bathroom foot tap. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great dance. Sounds like something um, my uncle told me about. Well, let's kind of power through this here. No, no, that I'm not loving the, the yeah. you know, the foot tapping. Um, personally, I'm, I'm very similar to you. I, I did very little in the way of Warhammer. Uh, <laughs> I bought a we lowball this podcast. I, I, I bought a but, shitload of black light. I saw books. that Andy's been doing painting. So. Uh, when I get the chance, yeah, but, yeah. John so I first. bought a, I bought a. So you got to you got to hold up our podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a shitload of black library books. Um, I, I got a Are real hard for on for fluff. So you're stretching. For um, I did stretch. Um, and then I painted my Taylor Gamer stuff, and, and me and you played a game. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, something, that's yeah. That's something. Good. I mean, it's so memorable. It happened like three hours ago, <laughs> and you forgot about it. Oh. Um, we took our initial forces for our Taylor well, Gamers again. Uh, the 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 narrative kind of we're going for here. Yeah. Is that we're for week one we had a hundred one dollar budget, okay, and then every two weeks after that we got another fifty dollars. Well, real quick, to Andy, have you done anything outside of Taylor Gamers or? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Into that? No, okay. The schedule is not not allow for yeah. it right now. It's been your, a little your farm bit busy your kid with and... the gentleman's farm, yes. <laughs> gentleman's farm, <laughs> another country like... album, horses and goats. Yeah, <laughs> I saw a movie about this. Yes, the old zoo. Yeah. It was dirty. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so like I said, $101 for initial buy. We had to buy one of the start collecting boxes. And it was $101 um, for a particular reason. Because very specific. For, for me, uh, <laughs> bitching about the fact that I couldn't buy a start collecting box and a Razorback, um, which I then went on to not buy. <laughs> but, well, but it gives everyone a little bit of, yeah. you know, a little breathing room. A little breathing I, room. I can identify with that because right off the bat, uh, Dave's like, oh, you can start buy a starter set. And everyone kind of got in their head that they by this getting started set yeah. except the eldar get started set is not a viable useful force Why? well What's it's in it? it's jet bike so it's warlock jet- and a jet bike and a tank in a tank yeah oh, there's, there's no, no two troop. troops there's oh. only there's one troops choice oh. yeah the jet well okay. yeah and it's because it's it's a minimum size of three jet bikes if oh. my remember correct correctly and yeah. uh an hq and a tank so it was one troop choice and minimums. you're wanting to do eldar and be the wind rider host that everyone likes being right now mm-hmm. you can't buy another set of uh jet bikes and be within or even close to the uh starting cost how much are the jet bikes right now like 45? 40 more, 41 something like that oh shit yeah they're they're pricey okay three so what'd you do like how did you make it up 
I modified cheated. it over to no, I, cheated, yes. <laughs> uh, I modified my starting cost over to uh, uh, unit of guardians. <laughs> so based uh, on 1995 prices, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm a little bit outside the the, the 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 box on this one in the sense that I've got a metric crap ton of stuff sitting around yeah. since I'm an old time gamer. That's and see, Ted and I were talking about this earlier. None of the stuff I'm planning on doing with this is stuff I, I'm actually going to purchase as new. Yeah. yeah, like the only thing I purchased, I purchased a Star Collecting box for Space Marines because they had that sweet Terminator Captain in there. Uh-huh. Um, and then after that, like I have my next month of purchases planned out, and it's all just stuff in my to build pile. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is my to build uh, last edition, maybe two edition to go Eldar oh. Apoc forces basically okay where I was building like a legitimate legitimate uh, that was a, a decent sized box wasn't it you got the Windrider I had for well the... yeah I have that and then eBay crazy ended up just picking up things as people were dumping them for cheap and I've probably got 30 or 40 jet back bikes when Eldar sucked. Um, back when yes exactly <laughs> yeah before the last edition where they also got badass <laughs> okay but this is where you struggled to you know make any ground on the table oh, those bikes and, there. Uh, I remember like back in the day like 5th edition 4th edition like they were not doing so great like that was no, not a hot choice it was, that was not, back in the uh, have your guardians platform sticking out behind a building and then shoot without people being able to shoot you yeah pretty much <laughs> and uh, I never really got to play with them much except for uh, APOC and at that point I was taking a Revenant mm. and uh, doing super heavies and things like that you're coming and, to Battle Brothers, right? And playing the Titan game? I'm uh-huh. planning on it, but they finally posted. I have to be able to work some schedule stuff to make oh, sure yeah. I can make it. But by all means, I want to be there. You look like you're coming down with something four your months from now. <laughs> yep, indeed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't know my schedule yet. That's a big thing. Okay. <laughs> Can't yeah. quite plan that far. <laughs> I will be sick. I'll so, like, for that. me, it's like having a metric crap ton of stuff, like we were saying, uh, like probably you guys too, mm-hmm. that I'm not going to go out and spend the actual money when I've got yeah, like I'm, three armies sitting here. I'm using it as an excuse to actually build and paint my space marines. Yeah, that's yeah, and that's what I'm doing with there. my elder. Um, the the game we played, Ted, your initial force was half of the shield of oh no, the death storm box. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. and then plus a death company box, oh. and then my it was, initial... you know, it was the, that plus a uh, plus a tactical marine squad, right? Yeah, because um, it didn't actually have oh. any troops in it, <laughs> so I had to. <laughs> and it, it was great because I think the tactical marine squad uh, box that I've had for a year and a half sitting in a box, like not doing anything. So yeah, everything was just like sitting there waiting to be put together. And then so, mine, yeah, and, and mine, I had my Star Collecting Space Marines box, mm-hmm. and then I was going to back the rest, but I picked up an Inquisitor, oh, okay. just because I really I, I read uh, for my my love of Beast Arises. Oh. Um, I love the Inquisition right now, so I'm like, yeah, I'll get one of those too. He's been um, mouthing with it this whole night yeah before andy showed up he was i'm glad you got that out of your system yeah Yeah. oh god so good um (laughs) (laughs) so but there's a small disparity in our points um i think ted (laughs) that's putting it nice ted ted clocked in about a thousand points worth of stuff (laughs) um i kind of topped out maxing out everything i had built as a 530 points oh um so we we uh we forged the narrative i know yeah. i know we've made fun of it before because it's in all of the sidebars and the rule books um but something i realized the past couple of weeks is and i've talked to you about this before right. titus i i could care like less about wearing panties. tournament play oh, right now because right. it's not as comfortable as panties <laughs> um okay. but having a good story and, and kind of mm-hmm. having fun with the mission so we invented this mission i i own the plasma obliterator model yeah. um so we essentially set up the table the the my plasma obliterator was in the corner um, the Inquisitor was hiding out in there doing Inquisitor things and being all secret. And then my Star Collecting box was kind of there to take him back to Terra. And then um, Ted's forces show up to uh, to retake. <laughs> your, your initial fluff that you posted up on the, on the Facebook page was yeah. that they were there to retake the Plasma Obliterator. Um, that didn't but, quite happen. Right. Uh, it started off with the Plasma Obliterator firing. So I, I think like I've, I've kind of built, the, this is the second game I've played. The first game, um, I think it was like this, I don't know, the dice, like the last, these two games have been so awkward. I think like I played against Dave, the guy who put it together, and he had his Nurgle uh, Marines. I think like I, I did, for whatever reason, it was like, all right, I'm going to take, I have this Terminator squad, or this squad, I didn't bring the Terminators this time, or that time, and I had my captain in Terminator armor with his uh, Thunder Hammer, and he was going to charge a 10-man squad and uh, take them down. And, you know, when you're dropping 20 shots into a Terminator, they die. <laughs> so he brought me down to one wound. And uh, I think he charged. And uh, he got into hand-to-hand. He whiffed everything. Just like he... Well, 
Um, spoilers. Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> he, he whiffed everything again. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I think they, they, they beat my guy in hand-to-hand. Like, Dave, on the other hand, did the exact same thing against my uh, Flesh Terrors and lost his HQ to, in hand-to-hand <laughs> to a whole bunch of my Tack Marine guys. And, uh, but I just kept looking at that, like, God, this guy is just, like, he's way too overconfident. Like, he just sucks at life. But he's, he's very enthusiastic about sucking at it so but i believe you started with blaming the dice is that correct <laughs> well, <laughs> which, which it, i can identify with i, I you know, fir- first game of I think, sixth myself edition. this character i understand yeah. <laughs> first game of sixth edition we got it, it came out very excited to get over to annie mcdermott's place we oh, yeah. break out the armies i got the collector set or something like that they came with their little special gray skull plastic dice you know? yeah oh. and we start playing they start rolling those things and i'm like I'm going to make his Chaos Space Marines make their saves. I mean, I'm going to shoot bolters at them. They're going to get their save, which we discover in this movie is not quite accurate. But <laughs> um, And so I'm like, I'm just going to throw dice at him. He's going to have to make his three. I'll be able yeah. to clip a couple guys every time, except I should be hitting on three ups, yeah. except I'm not hitting. Ever? Ever. What? And I'm going, what the hell? What? And I'm starting to get a little weird towards the end. I mean, this, there's something wrong. Well, I start researching the dice, and sure enough, the way that these things were made, they're hollow in the center, and they are, like, unintentionally weighted. Oh. And I'm like, and it was a legitimate no sh- crap. These things are no good. Wow. <laughs> Unless you want to set them aside for your what, morale dice. Yeah, so, which box you, so you just you could sit there and roll these things and find out how they're unbalanced. And I went which to uh, buy some on eBay, and it's yeah. nothing to do with uh, perils of the warp tests or morale <laughs> checks. Yeah. Uh, I will just uh, you know use them as a special time. Yeah. And, and I was actually it found out there there was research that wow. people were cutting these things up and find out what that box they were was that? Oh, that was you know you'd get your dice and your different marker stuff in like oh. a little. Uh, Little last gun power cell pack. Oh thing. right, right. It's yeah, like a okay. collector's thing when collector's six thing. came out. Oh, was that the one that had like the uh, the really ornate, um, mm-hmm. like relief, whatever? With like the one, two. Yep. It was all swirly. Yep. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, I've heard that about like chess X. Like if it's like uh, if it's if, if it's a solid color, oftentimes like they they make the whatever it is, like the plastic or whatever. It's like a compound, and I think it's like it's almost like a resin or something like that. So it's activated, yep. and so like sometimes when they pour them. Um, it's actually you'll find like pockets of powder like if you cut them apart like yep. there's pockets of powder in there and so there, it's there like are YouTube not... videos of guys cutting these things open to show you the difference and uh-huh. like the quality like it actually does make a difference so they were saying like you have to get the opaque one or like the right see-through. you have to be able to see through it yeah, yeah. No, it's gonna have to buy some new dice for, for Vegas <laughs> um, so but for, for our game I think the thing that, that I took away from it the most is after we were done and we got through five turns pretty quick yeah I didn't really care who won or lost yeah that that was kind so of our whole objective was to like I, we had to take the obliterator. You had what, to have, have fun. the plasma obliterator, yeah, yeah. or I had to take the plasma obliterator. Right, I had to hold the plasma. My my fluff is that I have to. Uh, I'm preparing this Inquisitor to leave by hook or by crook, uh, whether he wants to or not. So we're waiting for the transport to come down to the pond to pick us up. And obviously, a big old plasma obliterator is a really good landmark on a barren kind of battlefield to pick someone up at. And yours is the, you know... Uh, Captain Don Quixote. Well, it's not really his name, but he's a... Uh... A Don Quixote, <laughs> yes. You're, you're not Crimson Fist. <laughs> no. <laughs> but he was... Yeah, he just saw that as, like, an opportunity to earn fame and glory by taking off this uh, the Xenos threat that was surrounding this thing. And the... So I'm getting the impression that you guys are all about, you know, like being a little bit more into the fl- fluff play and getting uh, your narrative. Now, now, see, when we started the podcast, I was most definitely not. Oh, yeah. 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 We had that. Uh, so, we would you describe whole... yourselves as fluffers? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've always been a fluffer. Waste. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, when it, what it came down to was when the we plasma... need to make that into a shirt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Somebody hold like fondling two dice. <laughs> yeah. I want that. Mob that, rules that fluff work. squad. If you only knew an artist. <laughs> Oh man, uh, yeah. Um, no, I got to do that now. I got to, I got to plan that. Um, <laughs> Maybe somebody like with a nice mustache in the background. <laughs> so back to the game. Whenever the plasma obliterator fired, oh. it was it did not scatter at all. No, um, I presenced it a couple times with the Inquisitor for no point. <laughs> for for no point because it hit every time or got four or less. Yeah. Uh, like I think shot one, it wiped out like. 90% of a squad. Yeah. Shot two, it wiped out like 90% of a squad. Uh, you had some awful charge dice rolls. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That um, was atrocious. At the end, all that was left alive was your captain. Yeah. My captain uh, and his two Marine buddies, the Inquisitor, 
And one Marine who, I swear to God, passed so many saving throws. And is becoming a veteran sergeant. He's going to be a veteran <laughs> sergeant next game because, like, he should not be alive. Yeah. He passed Flamer. Uh, he passed Bolt Gun. Melt he passed Melt a Gun. Uh, well, he, the Melt a Gun failed to wound. <laughs> yeah. It was ridiculous. Uh, I think the high point of the game is that the the plasma obliterator that the flash terrors were trying so desperately to capture uh, was destroyed when the flash terror death company dreadnought charged it and destroyed it Hmm. so (laughs) so and and then they just stood there like the two captains staring at each other and i think like in in our heads like the our captain had figured that these were uh uh uh, evil sun's orcs because duma the the dreadnought has like a really poor eyesight and was like there's xenos down there and they all went charging in <laughs> yeah they are old after all and yeah. they're in two so, so I, I just pictured it as the two captains facing off about to strike each other down yeah. and the way i positioned the models i know i said again working narratively it's crazy it's fun <laughs> um like i positioned the inquisitor behind them so he would be running out of the wrecked obliterator like stop <laughs> you assholes just stop there's no need to fight. Stop, and then like they eventually stop, and I'm like, oh, oh, you're not, you're not. Why are you killing me? Why are you killing me? Um, but no, it was a great game. So, so we both lost. Uh, <laughs> it forwarded both of our narratives. It kind yeah. of had us, gave us a place to go. There was no plasma obliterator to take anymore. No, it was Salad gone. It. Everyone um, got a uh, participation prize. Yeah, yeah. that's great. And it, it gives me some <laughs> we'll fluff. Get a free T-shirt that we buy for ourselves. It yeah. gives me some fluff to take in. I'm playing uh, Danny, uh, who's been oh. on the show before tomorrow mm-hmm. night with the uh, the little force him? there. You have played him. I, you know, in all the years that I've played and done tournaments, I'm not sure I actually have ever played against Danny. Oh, I played against him a couple times. No, yet to win, but always a good time. I think that yeah, of all the team tournaments that we've played, because I, I think like you and I were in most of. Uh, I think we played. We, a lot we've of them been a lot of them other. together. Yeah. Uh, one time, because after all, in the team tournament, you would uh, get additional points for theme, uh, basing, uh, display boards, added stuff. Uh, we make shirts. Um, I, Someone shows up uh, with shaved eyebrows. Oh my god! You're gonna bring that up? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I believe uh, one year Danny showed up. I think last year dressed as a juggalo. Oh yeah, him and his partner both yeah. had uh, matching yeah. juggalo mm-hmm. shirts. Matching <laughs> juggalo shirts, That'd and they be, were not uh, playing Harlequins. So. No, no, the uh, the annual uh, team tournament that used to happen up here, yeah. up in Eagle oh, River. Those were a blast. Yeah, those were a blast. Um, yeah, I think so, we get something like forty people. At, I mean, the, I think the high, the biggest I've seen it was like forty something people. Yeah. And, that was pretty decent. They, yeah, no, they used to be t- quite the draw. I mean, that was the, one of the big things for me. But then uh, once Zion left, yeah. I lost my partner. And, Aww. yeah, sad panda. The tears. Had to go to Middle East. <laughs> oh, that sounds like All such right, a man. job. Well, on that positive note, yeah. I mean, I guess. I, well, what's. Uh, oh, yeah, what's yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Andy. What, do, yeah. what have you been up to? Uh, are you games in or are you? No, no games in. It's uh, trying to work something out maybe later this week. Okay. Dave's talked about coming out to the Valley. Um, cool. Dave Eaton, yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Uh, I, like I gotta just roll back up real quick. Uh, uh, Andy, Dave, and I kind of grew up together, so this is this is this is cool. This we is did pre-puberty for us, <laughs> very much so. so. Um, it's like twenty-five years later, still jerking off in a shed together. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that's magical. <laughs> Uh, Dave left the hobby, and now I think he's he did. back, and you guys are like, uh, he he kind of left the hobby the same kind of same circumstances as I did a little bit. You know, his big thing was. Uh, Warhammer Fantasy for many years, and mm-hmm. then they modified and changed things. He ran um, Undead, oh, yeah. and when they split them into two, it ruined his army, and he had like two non-viable <laughs> forces. He's like, that's it, I'm done. Oh, okay. Um, kind of got out of things, and then it was same for oh, me. That was a long time ago. Oh, it was. Um, and then same thing for me with this last edition. They, they threw Sixth out there, and you're kind of used to that four-year, six-year cycle with them, mm-hmm. and buying all this stuff and all of a sudden it's like yep we're dumping seventh and i went all right i'm not spending another hundred oh. bucks on a book and everything else and yeah. at that point got sidetracked with bolt action and malifo and this oh. kind of sidelined the 40k thing even though like i said we've Welcome been, we've back, been pl- yeah, i know it's, it's actually kind of fun since you know it has been a huge part of my gaming and hobby career i mean career career anyway, <laughs> my job Shit, you're making money off <laughs> of yeah. this that shut yeah. up. Oh. <laughs> um but you know the huge part of it for for a lot of years um and dedicated uh buying books and reading books and extra stuff and mm-hmm. this whatever they pumped out i was just a hardcore fan didn't make apologies for them <laughs> um and this movie is a Thank prime you, example of this that is, this is your uh we're blaming this on you yeah you it was <laughs> uh doing. yeah so i mean i guess let's let's take a break and we'll come back yeah. and we we're going to talk about um some cinema magic with with the ultramarines the movie that we made 
Yeah, yeah, we we no, we're <laughs> let's not take credit for this wonderful thing. <laughs> Robo Girly Man here, calling in from Stasis. Do you have a problem procreating for the Emperor? As an Astartes who's been chemically neutered, I understand. A lot of people across the Imperium are suffering from the same disorder. I'm here to tell you that the Emperor has a better solution than snorting ground-up Turvagon shell. What we have devised is an easy two-step solution. Every morning, wake up, look in the mirror, and say, Fuck you, Chaos. It's their fault anyway. Then look down at your jabang bangs and say, For the Emperor. In those two easy steps, you too will be able to blame Chaos for your impotence. If only the Space Marines could do the same. Thanks, Dad. Now get out there and procreate for the Emperor. But remember, if it comes out funny, exterminatus that mutie. This has been Robo Girly Man. Whatever the Emperor's will is, be sure it will find you out. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a mushroom. No, go on. Please continue. Oh, yeah, mushroom? No, I'm just calling you calling your bluff on this shit about coming back with random half stories from break. Yeah? And then expecting me to jump in and interrupt, so please please go ahead. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I was expecting you to... No. <laughs> That's not protocol. So, so... <laughs> I don't want to tell the rest wow. of the story. Breaking the format. Oh, he, he's got nothing. <laughs> I really don't. I got, Tell like, him out lines. there. And let you die. Yeah. So the like the, the meat career. the meat of our episode today and the wonderful kind of I guess the Hot cock. the 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 intro will be like our little like sloppy bread or something like that. <laughs> but uh, our, our meat says we are talking about the uh, 2010 uh, yeah. movie Ultramarine, um, oh. made uh, direct to, to DVD or direct to yeah. home release, uh, released in 2010. By the the wonderfully named Codex Pictures, um, a <laughs> wonderful film company who, who made uh, one film, and th- this was it. Oh, left holding the bag. Le- yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, I remember being entirely excited. I'm sure you were absolutely about pre-ordered this movie coming out. Like this yep. was, I mean, everybody had been wanting a uh, Warhammer movie for the longest time, and this and was they, it. This was the and, shit. Yeah, and then. You know, through the kind of history stuff, you had like that initial kind of 80s Inquisitor thing that was like really you couldn't find it anywhere. Mm. Maybe some videotapes of it someplace for millennials that those existed at some time. <laughs> a VHS. Um, a VHS. <laughs> or even older Betamax. I was going to say, did Whoa. it come on beta? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then every, everything after that was like cutscenes for video games. Yeah. And some of them actually were pretty good. Uh, Final some... Liber- Liberation had some really good cutscenes, live action. Okay. Th- their orcs were always kind of that classic oh. uh, foam, we're talking, got the cocky <laughs> thing going, and like I to get the mouth to move, I just the actor nods their head and the mouth goes blah, 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 oh. blah, blah. But the actual well, costumes and stuff were pretty Final well done. Final Liberation? Is that what you said it was? Uh, yeah, I believe yeah, so. Yeah, it was a Warhammer 40, like it was a strategy game, right? Uh, yeah, kind of like a Command yeah. and Conquer, yeah, style original thing. Warcraft type thing. But but yeah, up until this point, I mean, that's all we really had was... And fan movies that they would shut down on a regular basis. Yeah. Even some of them really well looked like they were doing a really good job production-wise. Um, Demnatus, I believe, didn't didn't one of them. They were doing it over yeah. in Germany. They didn't do so get, well as to get IP clearance. Though. Right, yeah. and they were trying to go under the, the fan film, no no uh, money being made kind of a thing. Oh, just okay. a strict... Uh, you know, like, I, I believe me and Tad call it... Uh, what was it? Parody law? Par- <laughs> or... <yeah. laughs> not, not, not quite parody when you're, uh, you're not making uh, a joke or just referencing stuff, but it's like full on. But the idea being it's, you know... Was that a CG movie? Or? No. Well, they had CG in it. Okay. Uh, you might be able to still find some of this stuff on YouTube. I'm not sure what happened, but basically they finished it and GW came in and the lawyer shut them down. Oh, I like that they waited until they finished. Yes. And then they're like, no. no now that you spent all this money and time, ha, 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 <laughs> we'll take it from you. <laughs> and uh, since this, obviously, I think it's uh, what Aramis is doing the... Uh, the Inquisitor. The Inquisitor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which looks amazing. Looks, looks amazing. Um, yeah. I really hope, I mean, we see a gentler, friendlier Games Workshop right now. Yeah. Um, hopefully, as long as he doesn't try and do something stupid like, hey, buy it on DVD, $30, then uh, they'll leave well, him I, well enough alone. I think the nice thing about it is it's like it's really great market research, especially if it's something that like isn't for sale. You know, just like watching the demand, they'll know whether or not that they can invest again. You know, like after this one, this flopped so, hard. I mean, so. well, this... yeah, and that's um, ultimately, I mean, who knows what the exact reason behind that is and who to, who to blame. Uh-huh. Um like I said, they're, they've had a long history of very successful video games. Oh, yeah. I and still see Space Marine in the stores. We'll, 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 we'll get to that in a minute oh, okay. with this whole oh, movie, because that came out shortly after this movie did, mm-hmm. I believe. 
And if you like do a side by side comparison, you're going, they should have just had Relic because I think Relic was the producer yeah. for for Space Marine. Right. Where this movie has some good points to it as far as like okay graphically that was done pretty well then you're going like wait a minute where did, did that happen and all of a sudden we're getting these goofy gum you know, gumbies walking down the street <laughs> where, <laughs> where, the, where you could have just used you know the, just the cut scenes out, out of Space Marine and, yeah. and completely made a better movie oh, it was, they, was, they like, did the were amazing. they did use um, a studio called Image Metrics I did read that for, for, the movie or for, the... for the Ultramarines movie for okay. the facial animations okay um, which at times were not very we, good. <laughs> right. So up until this point, the only movie that they had done is they did some work on Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Um, yeah. That was pretty good, wasn't it? Well, was, yeah. But all of their other credits are video games. Okay. Um, so Grand Theft Auto 4, Assassin's Creed 2. It definitely had a video game um, kind of feel. Yeah. Like it's, so, I mean, I mean let, let's just go right into it. I mean, it, it starts off um, with a group of... I find out on my third watching Imperial Fists because uh, oh, Andy, you're you're pulling up something oh, uh, from uh, your special uh, edition no, here. So yeah, well, he's 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 you're referencing the actual beginning of basically they're they're alluding to some kind of uh, disaster happening to a group of Imperial Fists. Right. And so so obviously, as a piece of Warhammer forty thousand fiction, disaster has to happen to Imperial Fists. That is their lot <laughs> in yeah. in fiction. And they wiped out to a man. Um, <laughs> well, not quite. There not were two quite. Yeah. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> but so so I just okay I didn't get it. So the the movie opens up in kind of a, a Marine's eye view with the most convoluted heads up display I have ever seen. Very video gamey. Mm -hmm. Video gamey. There was like three skulls on the One top left hand corner. One yeah. of them flashing. My my whole thing like I couldn't take my the first time I watched this. Um, I couldn't take my eye off of that skull. Yeah. And yeah, trying to figure out why that one was lit and the right. others weren't. What did that mean? Full disclosure, the first time I watched this, um, I did watch it with my buddy Josh, and we did make a drinking game out of it. Um, How hammered did you get? Oh, so What hammered. were the rules of this? You so, posted it, but... I posted it. We we had to take a drink every time um, they said McCrag, Emperor, um, uh, Primarch. Um, that didn't come up. The word Primark came up. Did it one time? Yeah, when he's doing the uh, the uh, retrieving the gene seed. Uh, um, okay, yeah. Terra, and then there, there was a couple other ones as well. So I was I remember looking at your rule set, and then I ended up like rewatching it uh, shortly after, and it didn't seem like a lot of those came up. Which like in the books, like you hear a lot of right, and that's so that's about rubber. halfway through. We're like, we got to add more rules in oh, okay. this. Because we, we, I Googled a little bit. We hadn't seen the movie before. Um, since we're going to do it again, I have came up with a different rule set. <laughs> um, now that I have a little bit of thing. But it, I think that goes to the core of it where I, I was doing, okay, this is a great 40K movie. I'm going to make a drinking game for a 40K movie. Um, hardly any 40K stuff came up. I no, mean, exactly. And that's, where, and that's where I will tear down and then some, in some cases actually defend. This is Dan Abnett writing. This is GW and basically now giving again, the Dan Abnett was writing for them at the time, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, long, long career at this point of writing for them. That okay. Big books. Um, and it is, I mean, you know for a fact, as, as, as protective of their IP as they are, you know that anything as far as the writing and the, the source material is going to have to go through them. So I will tear them down when you go into there and you're like, this doesn't seem like 40k or seem very space marine to me. I feel you could take the setting away and change it to standard sci-fi and you would have to make literally zero changes. Oh, you could you could even just dump this into a World War 2 movie. Yeah. I mean, it's oh. very easily. I mean, it, it just it doesn't uh there, there are things that they're desperately trying to capture, but I think that's where maybe some of the separation um, capture for the, the universe and the, for the fluff and the background. And then it's written, maybe written there, but then it's handed over to Codex, and they're obviously not part of the company, and the voice actors and the director are probably not huge 40K fans. Uh, I'm just guessing John Hurt is not at home John right Hurt, now. no. Uh, he had heard of it, I believe. I watched the, the interviews with him afterwards. <clears throat> Sean Purvey, they, they had all had passing knowledge of it, uh, yeah. as culturally significant as, as Games Workshop is in the UK. Um, but it's... I will give it some. Okay, so so kind of going through scene by scene here. Um, 
It then goes to kind of a voiceover narration. And John heard. I will get to say, <laughs> I get my good. notebook out. I <laughs> usually cannot stand voiceover narration. I think it's a very lazy way of doing filming. Okay. But there was nothing better than hearing John Hurt utter the that opening sequence when yeah. he's talking about you know you know. And one thing that bugged me is the fortieth, the first millennium, and in the grim, dark, far future, there is only war. Or, or I said that's bullshit because he said it's the forty-first millennium, so it's already the far future. So that's. Yeah. Unneeded words, but still <laughs> unneeded words. But the important okay. thing to point out is that John Hurt said, and I quote, "And the greatest of them all, oh. are the Ultramarines." Suck that every other chapter. Yeah. Whoa, that's I'm just right. saying you're, you're talking to a guy right now that's got a full company of Ultramarines painted, <laughs> a Thunderhawk gunship. Oh. I'm wearing my shirt, Use and maybe shirt. I have an Ultramarines tattoo. Okay, w- oh, you do? I do not, but I figured that would garner some interest <laughs> if I said maybe. That. It's an audio show. He's showing it to me. Yeah. Um, well, it wasn't Ultramarine saying they were the best chapter or whatever, so wasn't it? Or, yeah. On, on so, my, a little I'll, bit of bias. Of course they all think all, On my so. notes... Sorry, I, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> my notes here say Ultramarines are not the greatest of them all. Um, something else I want to say... <laughs> <laughs> if you get John Hurt to say it, we might believe it. That's true, yeah. yeah. When you get John Hurt to say it, it sounds amazing. Um, uh, one thing I want to point out is, like, five minutes in here, okay, I'm very confused. Uh, my, my positivity towards it started to go down. But the score, the music is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's what you just start taste. Yes. <laughs> well, so I can get over. It. I could hear a very English accent on that Astartes. And it was, oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's and it, I love the music. But I just I kept on imagining kind of like. But it, it, it does it does follow it does follow the standard. You know, trying to get that gothic feel of random, random, random Latin Astartes. You know. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, nonetheless, it does it does the music does tradition. come and go. Yeah, it does come and go, and, and the, the problem is that there are times where you're like huge voids of like no music. Or... Right, right. Where I'm just like this amazing score. You could at least reuse music or yes. something like that. There, um, I watched it with my wife today, uh, who has kind of a very basic zero knowledge of Games Workshop's background and history. Um, after seeing the Imperial Fist scene at the start, uh, her direct quote was, "Is this really how it starts?" <laughs> um, <laughs> What after the amazing John Hurt voiceover and the very good music, um, something I really liked is it it it, it panned down a stained glass window mm-hmm. of the was it the fourth edition Space Marine Codex cover? Yes. Well, yeah. yeah, which was it looked great, like, which they looked made it, amazing. Made it into a stained glass, so but it and was it, totally cut. And, yeah, and, and I look at that, I'm like, oh my god, that looks amazing. That is yeah. great. And then it pans down to a, a thunder hammer, not a fucking war hammer. It's a thunder hammer. Um, which is, I think, the fourth edition rulebook cover. Yes, from that shrine. Is it yeah. fourth or? S- I think it's fourth. Yeah, yeah. or fifth. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's it's to say, yeah. I started playing in Rogue Trader. So yeah, it's, it's so, so they all blend together. They had yeah. two. Uh, they, they actually had that hammer on two different editions. I think there was like the fourth and fifth, but it was a, a different version. Right, it. right. So I mean, and this One looks shield and this looks so great well. going down, and then it pulls back. Uh, to the Marines doing their their combat training, mm-hmm. and my next direct quote from my wife says, "It reminds me of Toy Story." Uh, what? She, she said. She said from? the Marines look like Buzz Lightyear. Oh yeah, I could see that. So I do. I do know from uh, when they were making this and having it come out, they did an interview with another podcast for Forty K, um, and they did talk about which one was it? Do you know? Uh, I believe it was Forty K Radio. Oh okay. Oh wow. Um, it, back. I mean, back way back. Yeah, was... Um, and I know that the the. The studio had to have some problems because the armor that is made for Marines is obviously highly stylized. It's in a goofy um, proportion as far as tw- heroic 28 mm And it wouldn't work. Correct. It would not work. There are things that, that Space Marines, as the sculpt goes, like they couldn't lift their arms over their head if they wanted to. Okay. The, the pauldrons get, would get in the way. Right. So the, you're now going to take this static model that looks cool as a model and try to make it an actual moving physical thing i mean obviously look at the guys that do all the cosplay and stuff they're clumping around yeah quite work um amazing work but when it comes to actually moving it doesn't things don't quite match up okay um and so they're having now to adjust things so that they can really have their heads of the space ring probably and your arm that enough to but that's Mm -hmm. that's, how would they do that that's i'm sure they have something internal in the helmet (laughs) okay the the 21st appendage or the (laughs) The penis it looks like you're out all of a sudden (laughs) so i mean they they had they had some distinct problems that they had to work around as far as making this armor move right 
were remotely correctly. And I thought actually some of the fight scenes and action scenes where they were actually doing things quickly, running, jumping, fighting, worked. It's like when yeah. they're just slow plotting down the road, which they have a lot of in the, this movie. The, I will say the character models like look... Lord I, I enjoyed... The, the dimensions and I agree with you yes. like I said it, it looks great and it, it's super stylized but you're you're right they they can stand in a bolter holding pose but that that's about it yeah now, and, and, so but they did too. great great detail work in these models uh, yeah for the most part mm. um uh, but then yeah. there were things that drove me like slightly I think the crazy. Helmets, I think the helmets were like you're, off. You're, the helmets and the eyes were too small. Oh, you're getting right into where I'm going. Ah, I'm stealing your shit. Did, no, <laughs> okay, I mean ahead, so ahead. like classic Blue Armor Ultramarines. They have red lenses. Mm. If you want to just go with all the fluff background <laughs> art that that's out there, okay. and I don't know if you noticed, but like they couldn't consistently keep an eye lens color on these guys. Oh, I sometimes it was black. That. Sometimes it was a red tint. I saw yellow. It was it was just wow. one of those. Oh yeah, all over the place. God, what movie was that where they changed the color? Oh yeah, Evil Dead, where they changed sloppy. the color of the blood in every scene. Yeah, it, like, it so just yellow, seems so to be green. so sloppy. We we pan back and we see okay our, our reproportioned movie marines we'll call them and like we don't have issue really with the model. We understand why it looks good. Uh, the lenses, sure, you know, oh, yeah. they, they have special receptor filters. Um, <laughs> and then they have my biggest problem with the movie coming up. They are you know doing oh, is it the duel between the they're doing the training at the start between the the captain and the the new recruit. And they were like, oh, this will be your first mission. You're a new recruit. I'm like, well, shit, what happened to scouts? Did they never, were they never scouts? Yeah. Oh, Andy is clutching his uh, special edition Hard Choices comic from the Ultimate Edition. Indeed, of the game. which gives a, a lot of background and also a lot of frustration. Um, okay. So does it answer my scout question? It absolutely does. So the background here, if, if you read uh, Hard Choices, what happened on Algol? Because they reference it, but they really don't. They reference it, but if you don't, they have, reference it. It's like, do you remember Al Gore, brother? Can uh, you, I, I do. See, can you still get a copy of this? Is it I like, have no idea. Yeah, that's I mean, the, the one on Amazon. After, I yeah. couldn't buy. Oh. Uh, okay. at, at one point, you know, they're they're sitting there prepping. I'm jumping ahead a little bit, prepping for for their drop, and they're going through their gear, and they're like, "Do you think it's going to be a shooting war this time?" I'm going. You guys were Space Marine scouts. You've shot a gun. Shot before. a gun before, and in. In fluff, well, they are ultramarines my... and they're pussies. So, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying they have other people doing their fighting for them. Um, <laughs> you know, you look you look at the codex, and this is the last editions of codex because I'm not okay. the new one yet. Uh-huh. Um, but the bottom line, the fluff for, for scouts is they go through years of training. I mean, the the process of becoming a space marine is selection, and then you're going to be put through combat as a crucible of fire yeah. to do different missions, which is what this is about. Hard choices. There is, uh, they are on the planet uh, Algol. And uh, second company has been called there in its entirety um, because there has been a uh, basically a gene stealer cult tyrannid invasion of the planet, and okay. it's out of control. The uh, the aristocracy aristocracy uh, has not addressed it correctly. Uh, they have now gone to full blown like invasion level stuff, and the second uh, company is having a hard time being able to contain it to this point because it's gone so uh, out of control. To the point where they're actually calling in the third company in its entirety to come back them up. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and if they had you waited just... a few years before the Beast Arises a series yeah. came out, they would realize that that's not the way to do things. Yeah. So you lose well, your companies. So, and this Only is... if you're Imperial Fist. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and, th- and this is where it, some of the frustration, I mean, it's obviously GW's license. Obviously, there's I- their IP and they've been writing this stuff for years, but this a lot of this, first the background in the comic and then into the movie, mm-hmm. flies in the face of what they have for decades uh, set up as space marines um, and what their role is in the battlefield um, for uh, domination of planets and things of that nation. They're a fast, elite, shock troop strike force. Okay. And So it should have been like platoons and platoons of Imperial Guard going in. And then them doing surgical things. Yeah. Instead, it is entire entirety of the second company going in and basically foot slogging and going face-to-face with a war of attrition with Tyranids and Gene Stealers. Huh. And you think Ultramarines would know better than that. Correct, especially since in the first two pages, you see what is uh, our squad th- that we're uh, following in this movie is Squad Ultima. So who is it? Uh, uh, Cassius or whatever? Caster. Caster. I believe. Um, I have this written down. Not, not from the movie, but oh, from, the, okay. uh, from the story. I want to say that there's like the Tyranid War veteran. Yeah, Cassius. Cassius. Oh, okay. right. Like, he's, like, he's beyond the point because there's almost like a Tyranid uh, cult, right? Like an anti-Tyranid cult 
uh, within the Ultramarines that, like, on a fanatic the, level, like, the Tyrannic they War in, Veterans. Yes. Yeah, they believe in destroying them. So, is there any tie to the Tyrannic War Veterans? Not or? at all. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. that, you're going way too way too in depth with yeah, well, uh, the possibility I, I, of backstory here. Trying to give them um, the benefit of the so doubt, but if there's no what they basically doubt. established very early in the comic is that they're fighting in the, in the hive in the underhive, and the original original squad Ultima is wiped out almost to a man. Okay, the only survivor is uh, Crastor, who is then promoted to sergeant later on, mm-hmm. and we see him as the uh, yeah. squad sergeant in the movie. Everyone else in the squad are scouts okay and they are lamenting the fact that they're not being used to uh bolster the main force and uh that they're out basically scouting covering the flanks checking other parts of the the underhive and uh we find out that the captain um which i i did some uh research very little little uh trivia about the movie Okay. And one of the big things that people had a, uh, an issue with is that the the captain that they throw in here, um, I have to find his name real fast. Yeah, Severus. It, Severus is, is is not. There's nowhere in prior fluff history his name coming up. The uh, current captain. Uh, the second <laughs> oh yeah, they, they oh, people have an issue with. <laughs> well, yeah, it's the internet. Uh, I as guess. dumb as that is, it, and, and this is where I will defend a little bit that they can. There's no, they don't give a timeline specifically yeah. for this story, so they could stick it in anywhere they want. And yeah, this guy was a. I'm sure at some captain. point there was a Captain Severus. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Consider like how limited like uh, background they put on various people. Yeah. Like why couldn't this, this is the bone that people are going to pick with? It, it, it's sure. not the current second company captain. I, mean, I, I guess no like listing the of 40k it. wiki, like trying to find like the ca- the uh, chapter masters of like the flesh terrors or something like that. And it's like oh, it's I, all PC. A, a, like, a, a wiki that's put together by people, by people that right. randomly should apparently show, know yeah. better because yeah. they can bitch about this. <laughs> yes, anyone that can get on their computer can be on the wiki. Yeah. Um. So basically, there is a. The transmission from uh, the emergency broadcast from the uh, the planet from the Imperial Fists. They need assistance. The the uh, Ultramarine Second Company is the closest by a large margin mm. uh, for us to be able to respond. But they are now committed to this uh, Gene Sealer Tyranid invasion, and he's not willing to pull. The captain's not willing to pull his full force out or a significant amount of the force out because it is they have to deal with this issue become before there's, they lose systems old women kind of a thing. Around. Oh yeah, well, and it's like a system thing. Force. It's like Man, planetary. If only there loss. was huge amounts of Imperial Guard around to bolster <laughs> forces. Yeah, I know they got their asses kicked. Um, <laughs> so, so bring back. what he what he, what he makes a decision to do is pull from the scout squads, okay. and he is li- they've literally just promoted uh this scout squad to squad, squad yeah. ultima which we and, see in the movie right? which we see in the movie except and, we never see them in scout armor or anything they're just they, they in the comic so say, okay. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, so basically basically yeah, that's how it ends is um in, in the comic is that they are um get, being given their black car, uh, carapace oh, cool. um and uh being told they're being promoted to full battle brothers oh. um, so they have never actually fought in full space marine equipment um, and the way they make it sound is like that these guys have never really been in a shooting war before anyway, which again flies in the face of the actual... hell the scouts do then. I know, I know that's the, uh, kind of the whole point. Wrestle. Yes. So during <laughs> nerf it up. So during the, 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 the newly promoted Ultima squads, little, uh, they have yeah. a little bro out in the, in the shrine and the, the, the captain fights are, I'm going to say protagonist, um, are Proteus, Proteus, mm-hmm. Proteus, brother Proteus. Um, and then we we see. And now I have to say, like this fight scene really bothered me. Like it really, really bothered me because in the end, so they they do their battle, and I think Proteus has the captain on the ground. And he's like, "Do you yield?" And he has his blade to his neck. Yeah. He's, Remove he's, your helmet. Uh, yeah, he's right there. He's like, "Do you yield? Do you yield?" And um, well, he has his helmet off. At, well, he didn't. He he removed it himself. I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but he's like. Um, and and he won't do it. He won't yield. And then he grabs the, his helmet and he uh, beams Proteus. The captain beams Proteus, knocks him over the ground, flips his sword on him, and says, "Like uh, in the end, there are you. you uh, Ultramarines you, do not yield. Yeah, you do not yield, or something like that." And it's like so. Basically, he did the exact same thing to Proteus that Proteus did to the captain, and now it's acceptable defeat. Yes, it's the exact well, same we, fucking thing. <laughs> we we needed to put in Chekhov's helmet. Uh, <laughs> right, oh indeed. God. So if you see the helmet in the a... first act, it will show up again in, in later. Yeah. Yes, right? yeah, yeah, the check of some. The, 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 the next thing... Well, that I just was, thought that was an inconsistency. The next thing that really bugged me is... Uh, the first, my first watching, Ted, I, I will completely agree with you. I looked at it and went, that's like 
cheap shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so the thing that not, really what's good for you is not good bug for me. You. And, I, and I'm, I'm moving past kind of animation and stuff like that because we we have our issues there. Is the n- exact next scene is them in the armory getting mm-hmm. prepared for drop. I am like of the opinion that would have been so much more impactful if they were not in armor when they were fighting and practicing and the things. Yes. That, and and then they go to arm up and because the servitor gives a very nice little speech about how you know oh, your dead brother's armor and you know dude please honor yeah. the dead and da da da. It's like well yeah but he was just rolling around with this dude in it for like twenty minutes punching each other. <laughs> yeah, That's not honoring I, the dead. I absolutely have that in my notes too. They're they're sitting there kind of prepping and you have that uh, the quiet mumble of prayer. I don't you know people getting yeah. their gear ready, swearing to the the machine spirit uh-huh. and checking their stuff, making their praises and, and making their oaths. Um, the servitors in there saying honor the battle gear. It will care for you. I actually, for I it. really dug the the servitor yes. part. Like, yeah, absolutely. The servitor kind of looked a little dopey, but I thought that like really like that kind of that piece of fluff. Like I was happy to see that like consistent with the the books and everything else. Like that was a really nice. Touch. I think the reason I think they would want to do something where they go from scout armor or or like robes or you know marine panties. <laughs> um, to the space marine armor. Is that like Mormon underwear? I think yes. I okay. think <laughs> though it was a a budgetary thing where they didn't have the money for more character models. Oh. That I mean, that's how I would view that. And, and and I would not disagree with that. My understanding is kind of how this the whole business deal went down. Is at one point Codex was left literally hanging holding the bag on this, and that's where they kind of have pushed things through. And mm. it could explain why at some point we're jumping ahead a little bit. There there are some times when they're out walking a lot yeah. <laughs> where you're like okay that, I mean they're climbing these stairs that looks amazing that mm-hmm. looks really good and then not 20 minutes later there's like this low res hill that like we should take the higher ground it's yeah. like uh, welcome to the land of no scenery <laughs> right. yeah uh, so I have the next uh, comment from my wife here on the locker room scene as I'm going to call it when they're getting ready uh, her comment is, I'm confused. Are they new to ultramarines or were they marines who became ultramarines? <laughs> what this brings me to is some of this movie feels like it's dumbed down a little bit to get new people in. But it's in that uncomfortable zone of where they've dumbed it down to alienate the existing fan base, but not enough to draw in new people. I, I'm going to say uh, maybe 15 minutes less walking and you could have added in what actually happened on Algol and explain all of this. <laughs> um, but, but then they wouldn't get where they're going to. Uh, no, uh, 30 kilometers away and we're going to put you down. So they... it, it was kind of fun because I think like, you know, like there was so much less boulder porn in our boulder porn here. It was boulder porn light. Like it was, it was like soft core, to soft core boulder porn, uh, 40k fiction. So not as much DACA as you were hoping. <laughs> One part yeah. I really liked, and, and I think this goes to what you're saying, Andy, about, you know, some stuff looking amazing and some, some stuff just not, was when the Thunderhawk was going through the atmosphere and going down to the planet's surface. Mm. Like, those shots looked just amazing. And, oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, my only complaint <laughs> is um, the the Foley work on this movie. And what I mean by that is just the, the sound effects. Uh, well, um, I, just, and that's the thing that frustrates me. So I'm, I will agree with you on part of it. But when they kick out the land speeder and it's making that chung, 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 kind of old, like... It, it's working it's rough I mean it's not technology yes. that that the Imperium uses as mm-hmm. much as like say Eldar I mean you can feel that like grittiness it sounded it. like mm-hmm. a dirt bike a little bit <laughs> that, that's my main concern it's like and I agree with you. It shouldn't sound like a perfectly humming See, engine, like, and did it. But to me, like it's a pod like, racer from episode one. No, no, <laughs> that's to me. If it sounded like a pod racer, great. I mean, you're going to get sued by LucasArts, but hey, free publicity. Um, but to me, it sounded like a dirt bike. And GW knows about suing. Like um, when when I've watched movies, like and, and I'm like a giant movie nerd, so like I watched like I remember watching the Terminator Two behind the scenes, and that's how I fell in love with like Foley and making sound effects and everything. Mm-hmm. They said that they were making the sound of Arnold Schwarzenegger's shotgun in that movie. By layering, they, they layered a gun and a cannon and a shotgun to enhance the sound and make it seem much bigger than what it is. And I feel like the Thunderhawk sounded like to me like a biplane coming down to the land like the, or like an pro- old school propeller <laughs> plane. Yeah. yeah. It, to me, it needed to have more impact. And, and something I, I'm very frustrating up to this point is nothing had any weight or impact. No, or, or yeah, anything absolutely. There. Except the chainsword. And I think the oh. sound had a little bit to do with that there. <laughs> yeah. Um, our guys are they land on the world's dustiest planet um and they have to be 30 miles away kilometers uh, 30 kilometers i'm sorry yeah (laughs) Uh, 30 kilometers away because of weather 
Um, that was kind of silly. Like, why why didn't we pull it a little bit closer? Like, well, you could have sk- skimmed a bit further. And I understand, like, you could tell at this point, like, the warp was starting to affect, like, a vision and everything else. So, like, they were on the skirts of the warp. So possibly that had something to do with it. But I don't know. Like, it, it definitely had that it, feel like, let's it, speed this movie up. And just drop speed it up. Doorstep. We're going to drop 30 kilometers away. Mm-hmm. And he tells the pilot, extraction in two hours. Oh, oh he's going to get some math on us here. Yeah. And then they proceed... To walk, and I know they're eight foot Superman, and they have a large stride. This but is... that seems like so. There's a lot of walking, a lot of climbing to get someplace, and then you're going to come back out. That's an hour in, an hour back, and I'm not oh. sure they're going to cover that amount of distance just plodding along slowly. No, I think something you I pointed out as well, and you you pointed out as well, is I, I believe in game terms a Thunderhawk gunship has a transport capacity of one Rhino, possibly possibly two. I'm not sure it can the thunder. Well, now they have oh, no, the no, transport. It's, it's, it's the Stormbird that can carry the rhinos. Yeah, you but, have to get the transporter. Oh, the thunder. Them. Yeah, the yeah. Thunder transport it's rhinos. And 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 I, as an owner of a Thunderhawk, I would be more than happy to dump a land speeder into it mm-hmm. and then pitch that thing out. <laughs> <laughs> it was, that was, I actually really dug that scene. That was, like the land speeder kind of like clunking out and like hitting the top of the uh, aperture and then like bonking on the ground and popping back up. Yeah. Like that was cool. Like it looked yes, like the, it would. The land speeder that officially did nothing. It scouted ahead. It scouted and ahead killed and killed two guys. <laughs> it scouted ahead, and the two drivers flipped off the ten other people walking forward. Oh, but I love that scene. I think like later on, like all the the scenes with the storm or the the speeder, I think were really cool. Like I loved, you know, just having that thing like hovering, just sitting still with its light beaming forward. Absolutely, I thought the the, the speeder looked awesome. Um, it was other. Than, I mean, when it's jetting along and cruising, it's kicking out the dust. It looks mm-hmm. great. It sounds. I enjoyed the sound. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, I said this to Ted last week, but the watching it reminds me of the '90s TV show reboot. Yeah, that was hilarious. That because is exactly right. Because the armor leaves no footprints in yeah. the dirt. <laughs> we noticed that too. And and it was just and this good to us to me as well. Like and there's no weight to it there. I mean, they're meant to be like giant eight foot tall warriors in this huge armor that you need to be like superhuman to wear, but as light as the air because it leaves nothing behind. Which is ridiculous. They had a scene where they were like kind of looking down, almost from like shoulder height, uh, down towards people walking. Like you almost had it was almost like it was like trying to pick up the fact that they didn't leave footprints. Like, yeah, <laughs> like just leave that scene out, and it would have been less obvious. But I think you're giving them too much credit. So <laughs> I, I think know. they just forgot to put it in. So yeah, as maybe. as they're walking and they're walking along here, uh, we get a couple of scenes where we have uh, Captain Severus and the uh, apothecary who would be Pythol, um, they just kind of stand and look out at the distance and hear war sounds. Oh, yeah. Which I think is their subtle way of saying, you know, we've seen things. I, uh-huh. I didn't quite understand what the point of that was at the time. They, they make several subtle references that are, I think are lost. Um, I, so really later t- later on, after, after um, and we're going to jump in ahead a little bit, but basically the Lancey beer gets smoked. Uh, or at least the pilot and the gunner do. Uh, the gunner being the lone survivor survivor of the original original squad. Uh, he uh, Craster is now dead, and as they're starting to make their descent up the stairs, um, the captain makes a comment to the apothecary about, you know, we're dying. You know, we're basically dying. I'm not uh, immune to being dead only, and you, you're going to honor my wishes. Uh-huh. And Python is like, okay, and it, it's it's just one of those. What what what's the exchange going on here? What are his wishes? What does he want? Because as we clearly know, that does not pay off later. No. Um, I, <laughs> uh, my, one of the notes I have here at this point in the movie is the captain is a condescending dick. <laughs> you wrote that out. Uh, I mean, <laughs> now that could be a, a true ultramarine uh, uh, inspired role. There, they are a bit condescending, uh, but so so I guess that's good characterization. Then be. my next <laughs> issue is when oh, that's your issue. <laughs> they have their standard with them, the second company yeah. standard, which I always take with me when I have one squad going to do a rescue mission. Um, <sighs> yeah, I was about to ask you that exact same thing is. Is it standard? Does the standard go with the captain, or does it stay with the company? Because the rest of the company is still back on Algol. Yeah, and we're gonna go tromping off with one unproven squad with the standard for the company. I well, love. It, it was a plot oh, device. Oh, which which I do enjoy the fact that we're gonna go. Okay, they're talking about what's the strength on the planet um, as they're doing their landing, and they're talking about it was an entire one hundred. It's an entire company mm-hmm. of imper- of imperial fists <laughs> who are calling for help, and who's gonna come? 
Ten, ten dudes. dudes who have <laughs> yeah. never actually been in their battle gear before. Wow. That's some arrogance right there. Now, so, I forgot. Or did they, did they bad say, planning. Yeah. But didn't they say that they were the only people around? They had to, they were like, well, we could just wait for the rest of them. This is ridiculous. They're they going to take like, well, six weeks to pacify that planet we didn't know about because of a comic book telling us. Yeah. Yes. Um, one thing <laughs> was when... But I think that they pointed that out. I think they pointed out that like they couldn't wait right. any longer. They had and, to go down there and find and out who was signaling the What distress. I thought was strange, too, is that they, they only refer to the Imperial Fists that are guarding the shrine that have been here since the, you know this relic and all the stuff that since the Emperor... Um, but as they're walking, when they finally discover that there's, the massacre has occurred, there are a shit ton of Imperial Guard that are dead, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, no mention of the fact no. that it's not just Imperial Fist Space Marines, but well, I, there's Imperial Guard... Or, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I think it's consistent as for with, like, the Space Marines anyway. I mean, they don't care, give a shit about it. I mean, they, they technically do, well, but it, I guess it would depend greedy. on which chapter. Yeah. Well, I think most... Maybe not Blood Angels, because they're pussies, but like, and the rest of them, they would... <laughs> They would appreciate that. They're like, all right, or not appreciate. They would just this would be dismissive. Dis- yeah, dismiss it. it completely because they only care about the space marines. They're gonna go in there and get like what it is that they're after, and then be done with it. And if a whole bunch of, you know, uh, astro militarium die, big fucking deal. Like that's their lot in life. So, so going back a little bit there, uh, when our, our second company banner goes up and is uh, set on fire, oh, right, the bale fire. but does not bale burn, fire. is covered in bale fire. And your the whole reason they brought it actually, and your veteran, yeah, yeah, check off banner, um, for warp. <laughs> the the whole the, your very experienced captain who's known nothing but a life of war and burning heretics and a very cynical apothecary, and is like, oh, oh yeah. ignore it, it's fine, it's just bale fire, it's just atmospheric, yeah, it's just atmospheric fire, whatever. I'm well, like, no. I, and later no. on, we realized that why. I mean, perhaps why he was so dismissive. But well, he wasn't. Well, well that's what's what. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on, I know uh, the squad moves forward and they find kind of a massacre but, ground. Of- but I think that that's for, like, the audience, too. I mean, in a way. Like, at that point, I guess we probably could have been chalking up. If you hadn't seen the movie, like, just chalking it up as, like, a, you know, foreshadowing. Yeah. And no, absolutely. It, and then, so, so... And that's what that banner, we, we could have been chalking up as in the first place. Like, why they brought this ridiculous thing is just so that we could have that foreshadowing. It's yeah. so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's real, but yeah, you're, you're right there. So then it goes up to, to like you guys just talked about, the Imperial Fist uh, decimation ground. Mm-hmm. Um, dead bodies ever. My, my note here for this is uh, the heavy bolter had to be literally three feet away from dozens of dead Marines to notice them. Because if you notice when it pans back, yeah. he's literally three yeah, feet away. Like, oh, God. And like, That's the guy carrying your heavy bolter there? <laughs> well, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> so we see just, you know, dozens of dead Imperial fists and impaled Imperial guard and just all kinds of deaths. And everyone's like, oh, heresy. Yeah. Uh, I did notice the apothecary tried to treat an Imperial fist by punching him in the chest. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Well, no, he was just trying to extract the gene seed. Yeah. Uh, well, no, he didn't even try to do that because, like, he's talking about the Imperial fist. And then in the background, the apothecary lifts his fist, just punches a dude in the chest pulls his hand back and he's like nope he's dead nothing i can do here <laughs> yeah my, my, my impression from that is he was checking to see if the gene seed was still extractable yeah, i thought he said something but, about like he was too far gone or it was too far decayed, decayed or something like that. yeah and That's and and i will again mention something about war gear here is that uh man the the reductor punches through that armor fast oh, yeah it easy. does why don't they why use they that on everything <laughs> <laughs> hey we're running around booty? yeah yeah <laughs> Space Marine armor? Not a problem. We've got a fix for that. <laughs> so I want to know why Dave's apothecary didn't do so well in our last game. Because he should have just straight punched through people. <laughs> our guys walk through like the killing zone some more. Um, the next note I have is where did Chaos get the cages for the bodies? Because they're walking along and there's just this Imperial Guard body in a cage. Just yeah. kind of hanging, and then going back to what you said earlier, Andy, when they're walking up the stairs, it looks amazing. Yeah, that's there's an amazing a crucified shot. Imperial mm. fist on the wall. There's just yeah, it's it looks great. Uh, Ultramarines are dicks. Kick a helmet like Imperial fist helmet yeah. off into the abyss. Uh, yeah, not on purpose, but it's yeah. kind of a dick move. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and having having read um, a lot of the Horus Heresy stuff early on, when um, the uh, Emperor's children are on murder. Um, and they're, cause they're, they're kind of in the same, same, uh, boat. They're going to assist the blood angels mm-hmm. who found themselves in, in a bad spot and committed all their forces. And so, uh, emperor's children go down to the planet. They can't get any, raise anybody. They go down there, uh, and they find a, uh, uh, basically one of the, not to get into the background there, but they find where, um, some of the, uh, 
Blood Angels had been taken, killed, feasted upon by the inhabitants of the planet. And they treat that war gear um, from that other legion with great reverence. Like, they actually oh, yeah. go in there to recover any piece of armor that they can after they melt one of these um, killing trees down. They go in there to recover it so they can give that back to the legion. I mean, it's just a helmet or an eye lens. Mm-hmm. I mean, and then here we have them stomping up these stairs and, and careless, carelessly kicking a helmet over. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, yeah, mm. okay. Mm. <laughs> and and this is where the point in the movie where we meet our uh, antagonists um, about oh. halfway through. I, I just have to point out, like, I was while you guys were thinking about this, I guess really <laughs> not pointing out, but I just, like, I, I got to imagine, like, how chaos does things, like, when they invade a planet. Like, do they have their, like, their invasion totes, you know, like, with their cages in one bin, <laughs> like, all neatly put aside? Like, here we have the chains to, to quarter people, and this one is our quartering bin. Like, you, know? you have their munitorium supply crates being dropped off, where it's like, oh, this is the cage crate, yay, hanging from the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because, I mean, yeah. every, every time they invade, they seem to have the cages, they seem to have, like, the, the hooks like it's the it, bdsm crates it's, yeah just, it's like planning a camping trip <laughs> all right guys <laughs> uh, large so men spires for spikes we see some actually no pretty good action i would say i, um, I actually have that in my notes also. <laughs> I, I did like that scene we have a a a bunch of black legion we find out chaos mm. space marines firing down on the land speeder i love that the two guys went under the land yeah, speeder for cover right. Um, that is awesome. And then he was able to look up and use tactics and kind of shoot at where he is. Mm-hmm. Um, and they busted the, uh, the was it the searchlight? And I love like, all the atmospheric stuff. Like, yeah. All it's like hitting the ground and yeah. popping up. And yeah. That was... it, and uh, I love this firefight. But then on the other hand, this is again where we get into fluff and background stuff from the gaming side of things. And some of the stuff just drives me absolutely up the wall. <laughs> okay. Okay. What, what drives you insane? All right. If you get. Uh, we're Space Marine on Space Marine fighting. All right. Nobody makes their three up safe. <laughs> I mean, these guys hit. If, if a boulder round hits a space marine, they are going down. One, one hit, hit, one kill. Wow. Absolutely, every time. So that both the guys on the land speeder, one shot, one clean kill each. Um, at one t- uh, point, um, our protagonist uh, basically has been told to keep the squad back while the captain and uh, uh, Venomor go up to check the land speeder. Yeah. Um, Why? The marine holding Drown. the banner. <laughs> is wanting to rush to their their aid and uh he stops him from going forward and he catches one around and goes down the banner is slowly goes down they do the little slow motion grab scene so the banner doesn't fall mm-hmm. but it's like one hit and he's down and that's that's three ultramarines with one bolter hit each and they all go down from long range i think my favorite thing is when they start uh, the captain climbs up to uh to go to the attacker and he turns the corner And you see a Black Legion Space Marine in what I can only describe as kind of a glitch mode where he hasn't moved because he's facing away from the battle towards the ledge and not kind of moving at all. And then he just kind of jumps in and starts moving again. (laughs) Um, And we get kind of a nice little fight scene between them. Um, Again, where we discover chain swords are badass chain swords yeah. are amazing um <laughs> rending i, I will time. i will say here uh Con- want, a, want a soup bowl <laughs> <laughs> you've got amazing. a soup bowl uh the, the such a clean instrument it was too. it was amazing the comment from my wife on this here is our chaos space marines like zombies because they cut his head off <laughs> <laughs> no i think that's just ensuring the kill <laughs> yeah um, just ensuring the chill and yeah. you have a soup bowl <laughs> and so, so the rest of the squad moves up here at this point, and then my note here just says "fuck you tower," because oh, yeah, I, I enjoyed the, 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 okay. There was a little payoff with uh, the heavy bolter lighting off and taking that thing down. Uh-huh. You got to see his uh, as they were doing their gear prep, uh, scratching in burn heretic, and you got to see that round coming out, of course, in slow yeah. motion and hitting the ground. Um, but yeah, they bring that thing down, and it comes down. It's very, very satisfying. And then we get it's weird seeing like a heavy bolter like bring down a tower. I, I don't know. I just, a- AV ten, bro. Why not? AV ten. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> it was the orc tower. So then we get another really nice scene in the movie is when the apothecary does his little last rites and gets the gene seed out of one mm-hmm. of the marines. Um, in version two of the drinking game, this is finish your drink while he's doing the the ceremony. Um, <laughs> but it was a really really nice scene, and I, I think it played yeah. really well. Um, and then my only question is, where does he store all the gene seed? Because he should have three. Is it like the backpack? I think or it's something? the backpack. Yeah, it's yeah, got to be the backpack there. 
So his face just tripped me out the entire time. Like, no, that, not... and we, we talked about it. it it's the, the the 3D modeling on the face is just like so. Some of them it was okay. Like, hit and miss. Sometimes they come in and you're just like, okay, this is video game rendering. I mean, this this is not well, what I expect I, I, out I of think a movie. I, it, it was beyond that. I think it came down to the design. I mean, he yeah. looked like a 90 year old man. Like there was no substance to his face. He was uh, completely gaunt. Like he just and I don't know crevices all over the place. Like it, it didn't seem like he was a venerable badass space marine well and they, and they he was the, mr the, burns the, the the new squad tries him for that i mean proteus is quite good at, at giving yeah. him old man old man yeah. and lost his uh lost his drive to to fight and that's right they, they have that banter going on so then we get to the in an interior shot and they're walking through kind of a dark room um this brought up a very good point in my head which i uh, isn't answered on the tabletop um why is the apothecary the only one with a flashlight or my question would be is why do they need a flashlight? Right, because I think in the the books, like they just turn on their low light vision. Yes, and they, I mean that's those. I mean they have they have enhanced vision low light anyway, and mm-hmm. then their suit augments that beyond that, and I don't believe there's a real reason for so that. So I think the searchlight actually was just giving off their location. Yeah, so and also the the flamer dude, the flamer just guy, being a dick. Oh, yes, yeah. let oh, me uh, burn through this flame a little oh, bit here. God, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> But it looked cool. I think that was. I think that's probably what it comes down to. It looked cool. It looked cool. Yeah, I mean, it looked. But at the same time, it's kind of like it'd be hard for us to be like, "What's going on in the black there?" <laughs> <laughs> well, but um, yeah, I mean, the, the simple way that around that though is just to give us either a, a helmet view that's decent, which, they, which they've uh, done. Well, they gave us a helmet view. Just lighten the thing, everything yeah. up. You know. Uh, so my next note for this here is they're all super calm about Heavy Bolter Bro missing half his head. Oh, I have a comment about that also. Uh, so, so a demon <laughs> prince comes and attacks them. And absolutely, I have it, I have a quote. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, as as they're all kind of sitting around inside this this room, uh, heavy bolter guy stops and freezes, and there's kind of a crunching sound, and he goes down, his helmet split in half. Medic, his quote: "Head wound, fatal, hostiles." <laughs> no shit on all of that <laughs> very clear a head wound very clear a fatal obviously he didn't do it to himself um, <laughs> he yes, shot right. himself in the back of the head yes um we we come to the un- i mean i don't want to dig on the animation we, we've been over that 100 times but the very unfortunate demon prince model big oh, guy yeah. with little legs oh yeah and it's... it just got worse later but yeah it was <laughs> yeah, I mean, this uh, it kind of worked in the dark room, you know, jumping back and forth and doing a very alien style vibe on it, not really the shadows, seeing the danger, build up suspense, don't show the monster right away. Yeah, I mean, and, and it was good and it was scary. Yeah. Um, we see, you know, the awesome chainsaw come into play again, again, yeah. chainsaw battles, um, and that fight was pretty good. And then we see the demon prince and uh, Captain Severus. Uh, falling to their deaths. Oh, and by the way, cha- like a- Chainsword, the way that you apparently pass leadership. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. A he, chainsword. He kind of came off like a, a, a mindless beast, though, I think, the whole time. Like, yeah, he, he was didn't. Attacking, he was more reactive than active. He wasn't, pick, like, the Demon Prince wasn't picking his targets. But he just seemed to be, like, attacking the first thing Demon Prince of, of Corn, maybe. I guess, but, you know, like, when I see a Demon Prince, they're usually... Uh, Flying. They, well, <laughs> they're, they're leaders of the army, for the most part. Well, and, th- and this is where it gets into... It, it's... It's frustrating because I don't know if they're trying to do this as a red herring that all of this set up um, and even later when they're being attacked by Black Legion, they're trying to make their escape. They make it sound and I'm jumping ahead a little bit as if this is some kind of master plan for the Demon Prince to gain access to the relic and then to get off the planet in an Imperial ship, not a Chaos ship. Mm. Um, but that is that is a little bit of, I'm giving it a lot of grace, I think. Right, uh, giving him that. Much. The next well, scene I, 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 for me, that still just doesn't get like how why he was fighting reactively instead of actively. Like, because all right, so like, why not? And this isn't to say like he he's still trying to done lure that. them. He still yes. could have like killed one or been successful. And well, he did kill one, but he well, didn't want to be caught monologuing. I, I guess, but ha ha. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so our our next scene here, and I know I'm jumping ahead here, and kind of. But I really liked this scene also. It was like this is one of like three or four scenes that I think were really, really good when we have this gap in leadership. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is when we find out that um, Severus said that he wanted to have Proteus be the person in charge now. 
and that was the secret conversation apparently that they had earlier um but when he's just kind of staring out the window holding a chainsaw that shot was amazing yes it, yeah, it looked really really great. good and the squad kind of arguing and then just kind of listening to the veteran um, apothecary and then kind of a, a, accepting proteus i really like that mm-hmm. and so at this point um we meet our two imperial fists. Oh, the chaplain's helmet was amazeballs. The, yes. I want I a I model of that, that chaplain. <laughs> uh, that, that chaplain looked really good. We had a... Uh, like studded shoulder pad. John Hurt like, makes his appearance. <laughs> chaplain Karnak with wonderful John Hurt voice acting. Um, I can like just listen to that guy read all day. Uh, and then we also had uh, Brother Nidon. Yes. Uh, or whiniest bitches, as, as I want to call him. The guy was jitterier than like a druggie without like, heroin for three days. Right, and and again, r- written very outside of what you would think of as as good space marine fluff. These uh, you shall know no fear. Yeah. Um, well, it's stalwart, and he is completely shaken to the core. And it's an I, imperial fist, you know. I just and, and for, I think for me, like I kept like looking at him, like he's he's hiding chaos like he's he's been fucked up by the warp there's yeah. something wrong with this guy like he's not a space marine like something is beyond and i just think that i would be giving too much credit to, to the writing here well <laughs> it's to say <laughs> that it's a red herring to throw you off yeah i i could I, see it being a red herring honestly the way because he keeps on reading the book he's yeah. very jittery. no one else is allowed to touch it no yeah i, I can I, I give him that i mean I, I can see that happening i just don't see him as an imperial fist i also like looking at this now in hindsight if you have a perfectly good building um, to defend, there is no way you would find 95 dead Imperial Fists on an open battlefield. <laughs> Sprawled out by themselves quite yeah. commonly. Um, yeah. I mean, they even showed that in the opening as um, Karnak is rushing back saying get Brother right. Nidon and meet, have him meet me or whatever. It's like their lone uh, Imperial Fist just standing there blazing away with by themselves. No cover and they're getting smoked by generic <sighs> Chaos Furies. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> But at this point, but, but I dug it. I was still, you know, I was still okay with that. Just, but then I was buying into the red herring. I suppose. Yeah, the, the chaplain I really enjoyed. I think yeah. the character model looked great on that. Mm-hmm. Um, on this one, we uh, they then decided to make that. Uh, I'm guessing 20 minute trek back to the Thunderhawk. So yeah, I uh, noted <laughs> down at, at, <laughs> during my second viewing, I, I was making some timestamps. Uh, I managed to make it up with because I had some conflict issue uh, with scheduling, but I managed to make it to the 40 minute mark. And at that point, a good uh, third of the movie is this them walking. <laughs> um, so out of 40 minutes, you're looking close to, you know, 16 minutes, 18 minutes or so of them just trekking to get to our point where they contact um, the Imperial Fist that are survivors. Moving back to the walking. They walk back with the Imperial Fists. They walk back over the bridge. They leave the holy relic of a land speeder, um, unable to be produced anymore in any kind of fantastic ways. Just leave that behind. It's fine. We don't need that anymore, even though it works perfectly fine. Um, and then it's they missing w- its headlight. <laughs> it, it, yeah, you wouldn't want to get pulled over for a headlight violation. <laughs> yeah, that, um, yeah, we we wouldn't want to have that multi melt when the demon prince shows up. <laughs> so they they get to kind of the the landing zone pretty much um and then they are besieged by chaos on all sides because our our our, our you know our, our banner starts burning again mm-hmm. um and then yeah this this fight scene yes it's quite amazing um they know they're being surrounded they're going to be coming the enemy is going to be coming out of the mist um the apothecary makes mention that maybe we should take the higher ground at which uh point uh Proteus. Tactical Master Proteus says, no, no, this has been staged. They're expecting us to do that. So circle the wagons, boys. And then they do a nice a nice group shot where everyone checks and nice in little, and like, everyone. Nice spin shot. Yeah, no, and I like that. I'm, I'm yeah. a sucker for kind of like action cliches <laughs> like that there. Take a knee. T- yeah, take a knee. Uh, and then Chaos Attacks. And then obviously Bolters are AP2 in this in this, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, uh, in this movie because everything splatters away. And then we come to the single most rage inducing part of okay, this and I, entire and I think, movie. I think I know where you're going with oh. this and this is one of the other hot button pissy moments of uh, internet rage for people um, commenting about uh, things not matching up with what certain weapons actually do. Yes. Oh. Well, go ahead and take a stab at what you think I'm oh, talking about. Ooh, first. There's two of them. No. No, no. no, no there's, only about, okay. there's only one. There's only one. 
Uh, so we talked about, obviously, people having nerd rage over the fact of who this captain is, and they can't figure that out. Kind of a pointless issue. But they take great issue with how the Crozius Arcanum is wielded. You know that thing that gives you a 4-plus yeah, yeah. and vulnerable save? And then that was the uh, Heretic's Burn or whatever. Yeah, which, yeah. you know, John Hurt saying it sounds amazing, and yeah. I will buy it for three seconds while he says it. <gasps> this is where I think that the, the, the uh, video game writers in the company stepped forward, and they were like, let me write this part. I, th- I think he, yeah, he does his thing, and he ends up, like, blasting a shit ton of these guys. Like, it, it looked like they had just won. And then I think they go back to fighting just so, fine. And then I think, what is it, the, the uh, apothecary is like, all right, is that thing uh, ready to go again? Uh, like, he's waiting Proteus for his meter. Again, to- it? Yeah, Proteus is like, hey, can you use that gun again? Well, no, it has to recharge. <laughs> and I'm just, at, at this point, you know, everything you're, is... You're waiting for your power meter to build oh, back yeah. up so you can do your super. <laughs> oh, that was the other part you need of... to do more combos. <laughs> that, that was the other part of the drinking game, is we had to drink whenever something incredibly was uh, against anything we've ever known about the IP oh, before. Wow, oh, um, so yeah, so that was a chug moment. <laughs> yeah, the the uh, the uh, okay, we're trained in all sorts of weapons. Uh, I've been hit. I dropped my flamer. It's leaking. Let me go ahead and fumble with that thing for a while till it blows up. So, in my so face. I I feel that was the, I think let that it was go. The I feel yeah. flamer do. Okay, so the flamer guy, his flamer gets shot. It starts hissing on the ground. So instead of realizing that they're all in meter thick pieces of ceramite armor. Um, he decides to jump on that life grenade and be blown up by it. Indeed. Which I feel that if he just stayed where he was... He would have been fine. He would have been fine. Because I do believe everyone has the option to have a bolt pistol. Yes. Along with it. Um, <laughs> I, I just love that somehow it was this f- like fumbling with a flamer, which you know hopefully designed to be rugged enough to take into battle... But for him fumbling with it, like, is what sets it off and That's ends up like what damn near frustrated the this. hell out of me. Right. Like, um, okay, the the master of this weapon doesn't know what to do with it, but the other guys are like, no, in the background. Indeed. <laughs> and, <laughs> and and meanwhile, gunning people down with with bolter fire, <laughs> and not taking too many. Uh, I mean, I I don't know. I mean, they are veterans, maybe of the long war, and they're a little rusty. Mm. But I mean, those but black legion could not. Veterans not of the long war. Anything? <laughs> yeah, oh, right. The fiance, yeah. Yeah. They 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 were oh. terrible. I I remember. Okay, so we well, were they killed two guys. Jo- well, my buddy Josh and I we were live tweeting while we were drinking along to this movie, and uh, one of our, our guys Sterling, who's been on the show before, uh, mentioned that we should drink whenever, uh, anytime chaos goes down like a bitch. I believe was his exact oh. terming. So yeah, it was about this halfway point in the movie we we jumped into overdrive. <laughs> uh, the. <laughs> Were you cognizant at the end? Yeah. Uh, well, we moved on to it. We started playing an Independence Day drinking game, and then that's when it went fluffy. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, oh, Independence Day, the movie? The movie. Okay. Thanks, which okay. stands up amazingly, but that's another conversation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at this point, Captain Severus magically jumps out of the dusty background and saves the squad from being murdered by chaos. Oh, yeah. Uh, and saves the day. Um, I was trying to give them way too much credit. I was looking to see if his purity seal wasn't there anymore. It still was. It's still there. Um, <laughs> they they jump on that Thunderhawk. The, Spoiler, it's not the captain. <laughs> they jump on the Thunderhawk, which I'm only guessing has been like idling there for three to no, five hours. The, the Yeah. Uh, another one of my big issues is they end this scene with the, the Thunderhawk swooping in, doing the generic strafing run explosion and foreground at mm. nothing. I don't know if you guys caught that either, but it's literally like this Thunderhawk <laughs> no. doing this, these, these these figure eight sky swoops almost, and then like firing the battle, firing you know dropping um, munitions and on random. You can't even see the ground, yeah. um, and then just having like the generic fire burst come up underneath it. And I'm going, what what's he shooting at? Because the driver's like, it. fuck yeah! This is, this is this is this is kind of like your not that great war movie doing an ending. Uh, air, aerial strafing montage of like stock footage or something. It's not good. Yay, backups here. Yeah, basically. And with that, they are off world. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and we will come back for the finale of the Ooh. Ultramarines movie where it all comes together. Let's start, taste. Spoilers, it doesn't. <laughs> to the objective, my brother. With haste, we must recover the chapter master before the vile Tyranids devour him. At all hope for our chapter's future. I fear it is too late, brother, for look on the horizon. An incoming monster heads for our honorable leader. We can still make it. No, brother, there is no hope. He's Turvig gone now. God damn it, Dave. 
And we're back. It was a long break. Uh, our our machine is <laughs> slowly filling. Uh, but you only filled about half a minute. Of that. Yeah, yeah. So good job. That that was a good thing. Uh, so uh, recap. Let's start at the beginning. No, let's let's not. Uh, the Thunderhawks Dicks and jokes. The, jokes. Yeah, yeah. The the dick shaped Thunderhawk. No, the Thunderhawk is uh, flying back to the main ship. Mm-hmm. Um, it's this time Proteus lets uh, Severus know. Or no, when they're on the ship, Proteus goes, hey, uh, I don't trust these Imperial fists, because one's jittery, and the other one has a freaky skull helmet. Yeah, very scary. Super sweet freaky skull helmet. Super sweet. It was like Prince if he had a uh, super sweet helmet. But the the good captain says we shall go confront them. Yes. Yes, the good captain. (laughs) The good sir. They promptly go down and confront them. Uh, They have a little bit of a dick measuring contest. Yep. Yep. Um, at which point the Imperial Fist lose. Yeah. Uh, Karnak gets shot in the head, which, <laughs> apart from the blood pouring out, looked really good. Um, and uh, Nidon uh, whines like a little bitch and gets thrown across the room. This is, of course, after, um, after they uh, are forced to hand over the, the codex. Mm-hmm. And they discover that the pages are blank. And <gasps> Da, da, da. Which is weird. Okay, so now I'm, I'm to the point. Like earlier, I was willing to give the Imperial Fist um, like a little bit of a more of a uh, a benefit of the doubt. You know, like all right, you know, he's he he has this tome. Maybe he's being somewhat possessed. Maybe there's you know, maybe I don't know why is he not a normal Astartes? Like why is he acting like such a punk? And then now all of a sudden I'm like, why has he been toiling over the fact that this thing is empty for this long? Like it's why? not something he read. No, like, he did read it. Well, it was blank. So. But no, when they were in on the planet, he right. was leafing through the pages of the book. Which was blank. Which was blank. So the entire time he's been acting like a whiny bitch because he found a book that had no writing in it. It's confusing. Like at, at that point I'm uh, like, all right, there's no right. good excuse right, for why up. you're acting like a whiny bitch. And then <laughs> uh, Chekhov's banner comes into play. Uh, walking in and be like, hey, if the demon's dead, because they thought Karnak was a demon, um, why is the banner Lost still on fire? fire shows up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank God for the, the MacGuffin. Uh, shows up. The, the MacGuffin that flew back on the Thunderhawk with the demon. Um, <laughs> <and> <laughs> I didn't think about that. Yeah, that, that. That thing has been with him the whole time. Yeah. Ignore it. It's just bail fire. And it didn't light off when the prince <clears throat> first shows up. It only light. Yeah, it's been what lit in three times. Yeah, yeah. correct. Uh, um, so they're like, so "Well, the demon must still be here." And then obviously that's when Severus decides to reveal himself as not Severus who survived an eighty foot fall, but as a demon prince. Um, we're oh, just the chicken legs. God. Oh yeah. Ugh. Oh. Okay, this, so before the Demon Prince, eh, it was okay, a little bit short, but this time, oh my god, it looked like they'd like severed a, a pig's legs and put this thing on there, it's little stubby itty bitty things. It was terrible. His girth was ginormous, his head was like a little man stuck Are you talking about his penis? Or? It was like, it, it was like a bad I, Photoshop deal. Well, I don't, I don't know, I, they clearly don't ever show a penis, well, but there Ted, is a Ted's point. talking about his there, giant head and his massive girth. There, 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 just... there, there is a point, though, where they show like that very popular thing right now with GW to show like that there's an opening across his chest with a mouth kind of vagina looking oh, yeah. teeth. You, you know, I did like that the, the shoulder pads had like opening and closing mouths very and his arms. That, uh, very good. Um, I wonder what someone has to do to be punished to being a demon prince's shoulder pad. Um, <laughs> Don't but yeah, it's, and it's, it's kind of like going back to the last episode where we had uh, Steve the left testicle. Steve the left testicle. Uh, the emperor's the left testicle. Mm-hmm. Uh, a very disappointing fight scene uh, occurs. Uh, much, very much so. Um, um, and now there, there's a, a lot of bolter blazing at nothing. Um, we have some uh, stabby stabby with a uh, banner. Yep, yep. So, so it runs out of you tries to use the holy banner as a spear, um, and then the 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 like. The the demon prince up to this point, he's kind of gone through the ship and killed everyone else, mm-hmm. um, including the the apothecary. Who well, the apothecary makes a last. I mean, he was ambushed in the hallway, well, and so, then he right. kind of comes to the rescue, and we get a good backstabbing, and then he's done. Yeah, and he's like, oh, I think he's going to be like, oh, I'll take glory. I can't kill him myself, ha, yes. <laughs> young thing. Yes, go get him, Tiger. Um, and then it's in that moment, Proteus is beaten on the ground. And um, so we had the Imperial Fist and Proteus. I, I do like that the Imperial Fist was like one of the last remaining Marines. Yeah, because he's not cool. a punk bitch. <laughs> uh, he actually has been a battle brother for a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, so five minutes till main engines fire. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, that was the thing. Okay. Oh, I'll get to that in a second here. But like, 
<laughs> the okay, so Proteus is on the ground. He's all like, uh, like whining like a little bitch. The the apothecary's severed head helmet falls in front of him, and in the glint of the lens, he sees the thunder hammer or the wall hammer. Um, and he's like, "Oh yes, I'll go grab that." He has amazing attention to detail. Yeah, and he goes and he grabs it, and he he obviously doesn't know where the release button is because he just pulls it all free. And then he... At the last second. Yeah, last second, uh, you know, pulls Struggling it, with it for a while. An initiative one hit and just <laughs> KOs the Demon Prince and he kills him. Um, I'm going to back up a little bit here. I want to get the, the ridiculous plot part out of the way uh, for, for the fight. Oh. The Demon Prince's entire plan for this whole movie was to let two Imperial Fists live to attract a single squad of Ultramarines to come that he would moderately murder... So he could take over the body of one of the marines to fly back to the ship to steal the codex to fly uh, on an imperial ship back to McCraig where he would, I guess, solo the planet? Uh, open, open a warp a, rift. Yeah. Oh, open a warp yeah. rift. Okay. Yes. Which, it's you, still, this is we're hitting huge plot holes here. It's still the Ultramar system. Uh, it is the Ultramar system, but the other issue is that the ship is going back to Eagle. Oh, it is. That is the entire point, is that they were going to go and lend assistance to the beacon that's going off, and then they were going to return to the Tyranid invasion. Well, so the and, Demon Prince comes out, he's like... Ah, I mean, unless, he, uh, unless well, the Demon no, Prince I, somehow has access the to movie, the navigator yeah. and the piloting... Uh, in it, the movie, I don't believe so. I think, like, in, in the, the movie, movie, they say McCrag. We're like, yeah, they I'll say, go back mm-hmm. to your precious McCrag. And then, uh, hey, they uh, dropped... That, that the might have different this, in the book. Uh, yeah. They dropped a chapter house reference. Very ballsy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very ballsy. Let's see here. <laughs> and then, yeah, so it's... Andy, I hate to break it to you, there may be an inconsistency. Yeah, there's, oh, Andy is, is desperately sorry. going through I the know. book, but there is inconsistencies here. I'm just trying to see if I missed something when reading this very short comic. There's, it's, yeah, there's just, there's, uh, there is so much promise for a Games Workshop movie. There's so much promise for a movie based on their intellectual property. Um, this movie was made for seven million pounds. Which, you know, Brexit time is probably a lot of e- <laughs> EU money went to help oh, that. To look that up. Um, so about $11 million. <clears throat> All right, just, just to break in. <clears throat> oh, okay. okay. All right, should I, should I count what page this is on? No. I quote, the, the good captain uh, outlining his plan to the apothecary. And I quote, <laughs> third company arrives in two days and re- to reinforce us and assist in the prosecution of Egel. I am preparing to leave the bulk of the second company here under their uh, their command to continue the mission. I.e., he's leaving his own company there to be commanded by the uh, the third company. We take a small force to Mithron to resolve the crisis there, and then return to support, to support the concluding phase of the Agal Purge. To be fair, Captain was taken over by a demon prince, or you know, a demon. So, prince. Are, are you implying so, that there was some kind of behind the scenes changing of where we're going to go? Yeah, yeah, oh. off some off screen plotting. Grace. Yeah, very very graceful. Of you. Uh, that's, very, that's what very, I tried. <laughs> very very forgiving. Um, so yeah, I just, <sighs> Lord knows they couldn't have spent two minutes giving some kind of exposition. To, to, to uh, sum it up, that. like I said, I think this movie. So w- we, we also have the ceremony at the end. Oh, the, oh, the new oh, squad it becomes also. cyclical. Oh, that's right. It becomes cyclical. Sure. It's TV Sweat Trope City. Um, yeah. So we're the banner bearer and Pyron. Or where the same right. speech happens at the end yeah. that happened at the start and keeps it all cyclical. Indeed. I, I don't really want to say any more than that. It wasn't really interesting. I, it's, uh, my, and then my, we end on an amazing something, something, something Latin, no, no fear, Astartes. Yeah. I, do, 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 something do, do, always do, do, got me Astartes. about that movie, and when I first watched it, it was like, no, 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 how it was that a battle barge Astartes. was running around with 11 guys? And that was, oh, there were servitors whole... and serfs and stuff like that. <laughs> right. It's just my main like thing is they have a stained glass window directly to space. It's pretty dope. Yeah, it's that's void hearted and glass right there. Oh, it was right next to the engines. <laughs> <Indeed>. <laughs> it was always lit. <laughs> um, so yeah, I. It's just it was boring. That, that that was my thing. Yeah, I mean, and the problem with it being boring was that I had time to sit and pick plot holes at it. <laughs> like if I go and watch a a Batman versus Superman, well, that's not a good example. I picked the shit out of that as well. If I go watch a like a, a modern action movie or some kind of action movie, it's throwing too much crap at me for me to be able to notice all of the inconsistencies until much, right. much you, later. You have to go back later and have right. a second viewing or say, oh, wait a minute, that didn't make sense. My wife, the reason the quotes dropped off is she fell asleep 
<laughs> during the scene when they're defending and encircling before the Thunderhawk comes to pick them up, which must be the most action-packed part of the entire movie. Uh, her exact words were, baby, this is boring. And then I looked <laughs> over and there was snores. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ted, I mean, final wrap-up about the movie. Uh, you know, I... It, it could have been better. I, you know, the, the animation, etc. Like the this the story was it was okay. I mean, it's about as strong as I, I think a lot of the other Bolter porn novels that one might read. You know, it didn't have the intrigue of like the Beast Arises series or or anything. But I think that you know is it was it was, a, it was a movie adaptation of a book, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, even though it perhaps wasn't, but... and, and that's part of my problem with it is that it wasn't an adaptation of anything. Yeah. It was written. But, but I'm saying like hey, this hey, is hey, what I could expect. Hey, honestly, it was an within... abnetation. Yes. <laughs> abnetation. Okay. Um, Where's I mean, my it, I, I think it could have been fleshed out better. I mean, obviously, like it, it the, seemed like there was. What you mean, like the they didn't have a, a good almost half of their movie walking where they could have had dialogue to I'm just saying, yeah, I'm just saying. I, that's <laughs> my inference <laughs> but honestly like I, I think that you know it's I watched it once and I probably would never have watched it again had Andy not fucking told us we should have done a review of this jerk <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> you know but and, and i think I, my life would have been happy just like such but i think that like now that i go back and watch it again i do the things that my, my Pollyanna side is wanting to point out like the the positivisms, which is like being able to see space brains do shit. Like you know, all the time I'm in, I'm having to watch it in my head or watch my my fingers push a little piece of plastic along the board, and that's like how I envision it. And so like this is kind of cool. Like I had a clip from uh, God, it must have been like a decade or so ago of a dreadnought shooting an assault cannon. That's all it was. It would like clump clump shoot an assault cannon, and I'd re- like replay that every once in a while. Like the, oh my uh, god, this is so cool! The, I get to the see opening, my plastic in action. The, the opening scene to. Um... The original, uh, oh shoot, I just Dawn of War. Dawn of War. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Was it? With the orcs a coming dread up. not yeah. owning an orc. Well, and yeah, then I, getting hit by a tank cluster. Um, I mean, it's uh, that, it, that, was, that was a great sequence yeah. of, okay, here's our counter to this, and now we got screwed by something else back and forth. Yeah. That was a great opening. Big fish, fishy, little sweet fish, yeah. yeah. So, but I think that that was really cool. And yeah, you could see it in other places, but I want to see more of it. Like, I'm excited to see that. Like, just the fact that every time I saw the land speeder and, like, it, it bumbling through the uh, Thunderhawk trying to get out or, you know, getting rained down uh, by bullets, you know, I, I enjoyed that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's definitely high points there. Uh, there's just so much to sift through yeah. to get there. I don't feel that that was seventy-seven minutes worth of wasted life. I just... No, 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 absolutely. <laughs> so, no, I mean, I'm, so I'd I'm... rather it have been there and having had seen it than like had never seen it. You know, I think it made me appreciate more other aspects of what they do well. Mm-hmm. Um, what I'm afraid of is though is that clearly it's been how many years now and has this Six. has this killed the idea of them actually ever doing something? I think with this has background. killed any idea of a life. I mean, that's the thing. It was like, yeah, it's cool things, but. The movie, I believe, has killed any kind of live action 40k um, yeah. from Games well, Workshop. The, the, Games I, Workshop is kind of, and they, and they have set up a series of like partnering with a company. There are several video game companies that they've they've partnered with that they've kind of left hold in the bag. That's why we never saw more, um, uh, the most recent 40k uh, massively multiplayer game where it was initially going to be a MO, MO or PG, and they were going to have to scale that back, and then it died. Well, we um, still have Eternal, Crusade. Eternal Crusade is is still it, a thing, it, but it's been in production for how long? Right, it's it's right now it's in pre alpha, so yeah. you can play but it. But yeah, right. But it's been it's been at that stage for sure. They've been a couple times. They're now. still working on it. Like but, you, ever, I get updates. Like I sign up for their newsletter, and so they're always yeah. talking about like different renderings uh, and so on that they're doing. Warhammer but I think Online that, like, was passed through several. Well, yeah, but I think chain. that. The way they're doing it is a little bit different. They're not having a major uh, company pick it up, you know. Like they had THQ like cranking that shit out for a while, oh, and absolutely. they don't have that. It's like it's a mom and pops, like a bunch of people getting together and like making a game I, out of love. It's I, not... I want to see this as an anime, <laughs> like you know, <laughs> forty forty k classic, classic draw uh, animation, yeah. Because yeah. uh, then the, then the proportions work. Well, yeah. and and the then thing the is, world works. Then they, the budget works. They need to make it not. It needs to be a series. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for I sure. Mean, like a Robotech, something of that nature, where they have an entire, you know, season to be able to go yeah. through to push theory, a, a story forward, like the Horus Heresy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, they could take those books, pare them down slightly, and I mean, they have a lot of. A, I mean, a lot of. I mean, amazing characterization, a lot of development. I mean, they make these um, 
eight foot tall superhumans. I mean, the personalities, the difference between the legions, um, and how they interact and how they view war and each other. Um, and there's a huge amount of character there um, mm-hmm. where it, this is lacking. In yeah. That. I will say we had our opinions uh, to rip off another podcast. Uh, there, are, <laughs> there are some people who gave this a five star review uh, on our Amazon website from where I purchased the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, we have someone who says this short movie is well worth the money. I would personally recommend it to anyone who enjoys or has knowledge of the Warhammer 40k universe. Uh, honestly, I'd agree with that at that point. It's an experience. Um, I play with orcs, yet this was still very entertaining, as all other reviewers have said the voice acting really is top-notch. Yeah, I agree. I guarantee the sequel with the Tyranids as the bad guys will work out better. Mm-hmm. Aww. I'm waiting on that one. Aww. Yeah, I'm sad about Next that year. one there. <laughs> Next year, 2017. Um, and then I had one more I wanted to read, man. Now I'm the one kind of looking through stuff. Well, I, I like that other one you had mentioned earlier about, uh, was it Best Movie Ever, Enough Said, or whatever? Yeah, Best Movie Ever, Enough Said. <laughs> um, for the, <laughs> for anyone expecting Pixar animation, stay away. For anyone who is a Warhammer 40k fan slash maniac, this movie is for you. Scouts promoted to full Battle Brothers and on their first mission, complete with all the chest-pounding remarks and interpersonal jabs. Anyone who thinks Space Marines are little robots or cookie cutters will get an education in their personality. I did appreciate that. I did. I, uh, all the jabs and stuff. I mean, Space Marines are just assholes to each other. Oh, yeah. All the literature. So that was really cool. To... And then, uh, uh, well, last one here. Last okay. one here. Uh, this movie was a treasure from the first opening scenes to the dramatic conclusion. I have watched it twice now, once alone to really get into the story and once with a friend. I have enjoyed it thoroughly both times and will watch it many more in the future. I think the creators did an absolutely superb, what's well, its capital, so I have okay. to yell it, <laughs> job. It makes Rude. sense. This is W40K. This movie is everything I wanted when I made the purchase. I might add that I was nervous about making the purchase because of the negative reviews that I read on here. Uh, how glad I am now that I bought the Blu-ray regardless of the reviews. It was a fantastic purchase and I would buy it all over again. I hope they make more as good or better than this one. Um, I'm going to share that. I hope they make more better than this one. Um, <laughs> well, I said, I, I'm happy I bought it. I mean, like you said, it's not 77 minutes. I, I, I'm never going to be like, I regret doing this, apart from when I drank to it, which I regret doing. Or in well. your case, uh, what is that, 154 minutes? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Several times. Um, but, yeah, like I said, it, it just it had its issues. Um, it was, yeah, uh, I'm going to leave it at that there, and I think I'm good with that there. Ted, you got anything you want to add in there? No, I think it's great. I mean, going back to uh, the, you know the, the fear that they might not want to do this because this is such a flop. You know, we've we've seen uh, uh, GW have flops before, and they just they seem to just kind of turn their head from it. And Drag then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That was. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I mean, maybe they'll have something else again. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. So yeah, Andy, it, you never know. Um, I was glad I bought it when I did um, I've always kind of enjoyed having it I've watched it a few times um, there are parts of it that I enjoy and just it just drags on through other parts where you kind of have to just muscle through or you're having it on in the background for something mm-hmm. um, like I said I do hope that they do take a fresh look at it and maybe do it in a different form maybe with a little bit better um, they just I just felt like there was a disconnect at the point that it was produced from when it was written where GW just, I don't know. I, just, I got the impression that they weren't guiding it enough at the actual production and direction level. And uh, who knows, maybe they'll reinvent it another way like yeah. they do with White Dwarf. Real quick, I'd like to point out that my eight-year-old son loved it. So really, It's rated R. I mean, you're a bad parent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to jail for that. Um, so all right. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, we will be right back. We're going to do a quick sell box, and then uh, we will sign out, and then we'll call it good. Right. But don't hit the pause button. We'll just call it good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, dog, what's up? It's the M to the A to the G-O-S. Here to surprise your boy, Jerry Annis. <laughs> he has no idea. We about to pimp his night. Hi, I'm Jerry. I'm 22 years old, and my night is a little worse for wear. It got handed down through several generations of my family. 
Uh, you see, we've been protecting the citizens of this world for gosh centuries now. It's going to get a lot harder to keep the village folks safe now, though we did not outdated the gun. I mean, I don't even have a care for gun. It's, it's tough. Worst of all, my father was very angry at my mother during the body ceremony, so she left him for a funeral. Uh, those, those emotions remain. <laughs> At my own bonding, I felt pretty confused by the feelings I was having, and to be honest with you, I can't look at my mother the same way again. We used to be close, but now that I has uh, ruined. Yo, it's your boy, the Magos! Imperial Might, is this real? Holy shit! Yo, 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 it's real, Jerry. Now give me your keys. We're gonna pimp your night. Let's go to West Sector Customs. It's actually narrowly bonded to me. Let's bring West Sector Customs here. All right, yo. So, check it. Our boy Jerry here needs a fly night so he can keep on representing his family and protecting the small folk from Xenos invasion, all right? So, weapons. What you got, priest? So, what Jerry got here is a stock 33 Millennium Night Paladin with a broken heavy stubble and a battle can that battle cannot. What I'm going to do is drop the Reaper Chain Sword low to the ground so the when the small folks go cruising by they know who's the boss. Nice. Then we're going to take the heavy stubble out and we're going to put in a holographic projector that constantly projects the image of his moms in front of the night at all times and get your boys rage up. All the better to smite the enemies of the Emperor with. Exactly. And as for the battle cannon, we got to modify it so instead of firing bullets, it's going to fire beats. 36,000 decibels of sick beats dropping out that speaker. Word. All right. What are we doing with that machine spirit IT guy? Uh, Jerry's night is slow to respond and hasn't had an update in years, so we're going to uh, do what we do best. Preach it. Uh, turn it off and then on again. I uh, should speed up the reaction time. All right, boy. Paint, what are we doing? Jerry's night represents the color of the house and family, and it's important that we respect the traditions and heritage. I asked Paint, what are we doing? Like green. Sounds tight, right? Let's get to work. Yo, Jerry, we've been working hard on your night, and he is ready, are you? So ready. We have an incoming orc invasion. I must protect my world. All right, here is the curtain, and here is your night. What have you done? Why is the reaper so low? Why are my hair's bleeding? Why is it green? Well, we out, yo. You officially been pent. Ah. Why is my mother 30 feet on the front of me? <laughs> oh, all right we're back uh, hey. hey look at that there um it's been a while whoa you got a salt box i have a salt box you do. yeah i'm gonna light up the tunnel whoa. a little bit here um it's not even 40k related so oh shit hooray <laughs> uh, but it is games workshop related um oh. age of sigmar what Age mm. of Sigmar uh, has been a very salty source for me right now. Currently or always? Right now. Like, people who are bitching oh about Warhammer dying and Age of Sigmar alienating the veteran players. Good! It was meant to alienate the veteran fucking players. You have the oh, people wow. who weren't buying anything. They had their 30-year-old army they weren't adding to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. well, yes, I, I have... I have. Uh, an empire army that is like literally if you scrape the paint off you can get lead poisoning on right. some of them because they are lead miniatures on name hey, two new Andy's the problem hey, yeah. Andy Andy name two new units from the last empire army book uh, you have the um, I actually have the All right, there we previous go. edition <laughs> I have the, de the demogriffs and uh, then they uh, stuck out the two uh, giant optional war wagony looking things. Um, oh man, that's specific. I bet yeah. you ran those all the time. Oh yeah, the never bought them. The reason, <laughs> yeah, I'd say the reason Fantasy died was no one bought any of the new models, um, and that's pretty much it. So they had two choices: they could either make new army books for Warhammer Fantasy, which would be like, oh, all of your old units don't work, and you have to buy all these new units, which would alienate all the old players and not bring any new players in because the cost of entry would still be super high or they could just blow up the fucking world and start again so as a business they blew up the world and started again uh it led to lots of nerd tears it led to people burning their armies which if you want to do that great there's such a thing as ebay you yeah, can recoup yeah your you loss. can recoup your loss 
Um, so on that, yeah, that's that, that's my thing. I've seen lots of people saying that, you know, Sigmar killed it and they did this and they did that. It was already dead. Sigmar Thank just kind of took its seat. Well, what what do we at uh, our local tournaments? Like there was the the uh, the forty k team. I stopped tournament. the music by the way. And then we had the and then we had the other not quite one. as funky in here no, anymore. No. We had we had the fantasy tournament that uh, Andrew Long would put on and. You know, I think the last few times that he did that, there was only like a handful of people that a would show up. Handful of people. Uh, two tournaments ago at the AK Dub, when they first uh, they were originally going to do fantasy, they couldn't get three people to sign up for it because that was like the bare minimum you needed to have a fucking tournament. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. Horrible. So this has been episode twenty-seven of Mob Rules. I want to remind everyone about Battles on Ursa coming up. It's our next big convention up in Alaska, mm-hmm. uh, September 17th, 18th at the Denina Center in Anchorage. Um, if you are unable to make it, there will be live streaming of the 40K on the top tables. Uh, wonderful commentary provided by myself and Sterling. <laughs> so at least one of us will know stuff and it won't be me. <laughs> uh, and then after that, we have AK Battle Brothers 2016. Ooh. This is our Mob Rules World Tour we're yeah. doing. Uh, From Ted, uh, uh, downtown to South Anchorage. Yeah, Ted and I will be downtown at Denina Center uh, saying hi, selling patches. And then we'll also be at Battle Brothers doing the same. Yeah. And then come see us in February when Ted and I will be attending the Las Vegas Open. Hi, uh, come see me. Uh, the only venue that I can probably say, come on down and see hot titties. Oh, <laughs> God, yeah, so many hot titties. Uh, I will be uh, playing in the 40K friendly tournament. Uh, and by friendly, I hope I mean uh, not sober. Um, and then I will be just wandering the halls saying hi and, and you know, trying to, you know, sell you stuff. Uh, and yeah, that, that's about all we have coming up. Ted, you have anything else yeah, you want to throw in I'm here? Just, well, as I've been saying for a while, like the AK Dub, I'm really excited about it. We're going to have some classes. We have two Golden Demon winners that are uh, going to be teaching. Yep. I'm super stoked about that. Yeah, so. AK Battle Brothers is going to have some great art classes read by Golden Demon winners and Ted, mm-hmm. um, who I've, you've seen his Atropos, you've seen his other stuff in there, does some great stuff. Uh, get on down there, buy your tickets, find out how he does it, so you can stop paying him to do it for you. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Andy, wow. thank you thank you so much for coming by. Thanks uh, for having me. Validating my thoughts on a movie, uh, and also doing some really good timestamp work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and kind of... Uh, yeah, we had a lot of validation. There. It was yeah. I had I had to sit down there and kind of stamp some of the stuff out when you're going. Why are they doing this? If we ever need a stenographer. We're we're on it. <laughs> okay, well for episode 26 of Mob Rules, uh, 27. Ah, episode 27 of Mob Rules. I've been John. I'm Ted. Yeah, and I'm Andy. <laughs> All right, <laughs> All peace right. out. <laughs> This episode of Mob Rules has been brought to you by Mob Rules Media. Please join our Facebook group to be part of the conversation at facebook.com forward slash mob rules AK. You can also email us at the mob at top hat hyphen arts.com. Thanks for checking us out, and we will see you in two weeks. Okay. And should we do our intro? Yes. All right. We'll just bullshit it again. We'll see. Let's do it over the phone. Oh, fuck. Right over the phone. Yeah, do it over the phone. Okay. All right. So that's 12 o'clock. Yeah, I know. Her. I'm rushing. <laughs>